on the season. Wildcats one and one. It's kind of the last preseason test, so to speak, for the Wildcats before we get back into district play next week. Yeah, you talk about preseason. This is exactly what we talked about Monday on the coaching show, Mike. You and I were down there perusing the field a little bit, grabbing some rosters, talking to the coaches, and both teams came out to warm up. And my goodness, Reball has got some daggum athletes on the field. I can tell you right now, those kids, there were a couple kids over there that looked to be 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, not much size to them as far as you can tell. They don't hit the weight room a lot, but, man, they got some athletes down there. So this Baker County team is going to have to come out and play some sound football on both sides of the ball. Uh, if you don't, like uh, Coach Rogers alluded to, you know, you give up a step and they may house one on you. Keep an eye out for number eight. Devin Norman, 6'4", 175, wide receiver. He's a senior wide receiver on this team, and they'll be looking for him tonight. We talked to Coach Rogers. They will slog, and uh, we'll have to protect against the passing game to do well tonight. First time the Wildcats in three weeks now, Jackie, have played. That's counting the kickoff classic at Baldwin. First time we played on a dry field, and this field, you know, when I left McClinney tonight, it was raining, and the, and the place over in Baker County is still soggy. But over here, you look at that field, these guys running around in warm-ups out there. There's dust coming up. So this field's dry. We'll see what that does as far as speed on the field. Yeah, and, and like we were just talking about, I don't know if that plays into our favor or not. You know, exactly. Uh, but like you said, they like to spread the ball around a little bit, three, four, five wide at times. Uh, and one of the things, you know, that we, we've talked about in the last two weeks is our DBs looking into the backfield. This is not one of those teams where you can get caught looking into the backfield because the second you do, one of those tall, lanky receivers is going to run right by you for a big play. So hopefully Coach Rogers, Coach Canada, uh, Coach Freddie Smith, those guys, they got them, uh, got them right in practice this week, and we can do what Wildcat football is all about and just get down there and kind of pound and ground, ground and pound a little bit. Wildcats will be looking for some offense, Jackie. We have uh last two weeks of the season ground and pound a little bit. Wildcats will be looking for some offense, Jackie. We have uh last two weeks of the season have scored thirteen points both weeks. Uh one of those efforts was a loss against St. Augustine, fourteen to thirteen at home. And then last week of course on the road thirteen to eight against Ed White. The only good news with that, if you're not scoring a lot of points, you're not giving up a lot of points. So only 14 against St. Augustine in that last week, only one touchdown against Ed White. So the defense is playing sound football. Like you said, they're going to have to be on their toes tonight with the way that these guys probably are going to throw the football. Uh, but look for the offense to maybe, with district play coming up next week, kind of spread it out a little bit tonight and look for some things that we haven't seen so far this year. Captain's on the field for the Wildcats. Number 70 is Tyler Burnson. And number 65 is Ace Cruz going out to midfield, and they'll meet the captains from Rebalt. Number one, the running back, he's a 5'8 running back. He's a senior, Josh Roberts, the running back for Rebalt. Wildcats tonight, Jackie dressed in the red dance. Red burns it. And number 65 is Ace Cruz going out to midfield, and they'll meet the captains from Rebalt. Number one, the running back, he's a 5'8 running back. He's a senior, Josh Roberts, the running back for Rebalt. The Wildcats tonight, Jackie dressed in the red pants. Red pants with the white jerseys and the black helmet. Rebalt dressed in the blue pants, light blue pants, similar to North Carolina with the black jerseys and the black helmet. So just a couple of minutes away from getting started here from Rebalt High School. And Jackie, just early on, what's your initial key to the ballgame? Uh, right now, just talking to Coach Canada a little bit, uh, talking to Coach John Staples down there before the game. Uh, it's little things, you know. The coaches have given our guys the keys on what Rebalt's going to run. Uh, uh, coach, and I'll speak on anonymity in case it doesn't happen, because the majority of the time, if they're in the two-point stance, they're going to pass. If they, the offensive line goes into a three-point stance, they're going to run. So that's something to look at there. If you're a defensive lineman or a linebacker, uh, uh, Coach, and I'll speak on anonymity in case it doesn't happen, because the majority of the time, if they're in the two-point stance, they're going to pass. If they, the offensive line goes into a three-point stance, they're going to run. So that's something to look at there. If you're a defensive lineman or a linebacker, that's a telltale sign of what play is coming. So we'll see, you know, how well they prepare this week in practice and see if they can get out and get after it. Wildcats on the field for the coin toss right now. I mentioned Tyler Burson and Ace Cruz. The Wildcats have won the toss and have deferred to the second half. Rebalt will receive, and they'll move left to right across your radio dial as we get started here tonight. The Wildcats will defend to open the game, and if the Wildcats have it their way, that's how they like to play. They like to play defense first and 
see what that opposing offense is going to do, and then see what we can do from an offensive standpoint. So, Jackie, just a couple of minutes away from kickoff here tonight. Looks like the Wildcats are going to come out on the field. Rebalks down. I guess you'd call that the south end zone. This is the north end zone. So the Wildcats in the north. The Wildcats in good position right now to make another run at the district championship for 2018. Well, a guy like Coach Rogers is never going to be satisfied. You know, I mean, he makes it to the first state championship in school history, and he wasn't pleased on how we went out of that game against a team that uh, every day on paper is going to do what they did to us. You know, so Coach Rogers trying to find some answers on offense, looking for some leaders on both sides of the ball to really step up. And uh, take control, you know, of this Wildcat football team. So in the third week now, third game, let's see if anybody's managed to do that. That's what we're looking for tonight, some leaders to establish themselves on the offensive side of the ball. No need to look very far for a leader on the defensive side of the ball. I'm guessing Kelton Nabb probably has 50 tackles so far on the year. At least. I, I know I've said his name probably 75 times. <laughs> so that guy's just everywhere all the time. Chase Hancock, our Farm Bureau player of the game last week. He joined us on the coaches show last week, and he's playing a good part of that. Hi, this is Larry Birkins of Birkins Chevrolet and McClenny. It is truly an honor to help make these Wildcat radio broadcasts possible. Birkins Chevrolet with sales and service six days a week. Cars, trucks, SUVs, certified used cars. We help customers establish or reestablish credit. Thank you, Wildcat fans. From Larry Birkins at Birkins Chevrolet, US 90 in the heart of McClinney. Online at BirkinsChevy.com. And we welcome you back here to Rebalt High School on the north side of Jacksonville. Mike Cruz, Jackie Baker, ready to bring you all the action here. 2018 Baker County Wildcat football. Beautiful night for football turned out here in Jacksonville with Rebalt again wearing the blue pants with the black jerseys and the black helmets the wildcats tonight in red pants with the white jerseys and the black helmets both teams getting ready to come out on the field we've had the national anthem jackie with rebalt again wearing the blue pants with the black jerseys and the black helmets the wildcats tonight in red pants with the white jerseys and the black helmets both teams getting ready to come out on the field we've had the national anthem jackie all the pregame festivities are over, and it's time to play football. I, I was just about to talk about that. I, I wanted to apologize to the fans for the delay. But, so both teams are in the end zone. Let me paint the picture for you here. Coaches are out there. Captains are out there. Referees are at midfield. The uh, the flag uh, color guard, color guard there. they're out there on the field ready to go. And so we're waiting. And we're waiting and waiting. And then five minutes later, here comes the rebound fan marching in, playing their tunes. And so that was the hold on, folks. So waiting on the rebound fan. Just waiting on the band. I was looking at you. You were looking at me like, what are we waiting on here? And uh, we needed some music for the national anthem, but we got it. Both teams now coming to their sideline. The Wildcats right here in front of us, right at the 50 yard line. On the streets on the band. I was looking at you. You were looking at me like, what are we waiting on here? And uh, we needed some music for the national anthem, but we got it. Both teams now coming to their sideline. The Wildcats right here in front of us, right at the 50-yard line on the east stands here as we get ready for some football. Jackie, we've already talked about the keys. The Wildcats offensively need to get untracked. We scored 13 points the last two weeks. Last week it was enough with the defense holding Ed White to only one touchdown, but would love to see the Wildcats get into the 20s tonight with some points if we could do that. Well, traditionally, uh, you know, I hate to talk bad about them because they are a very athletic team, but typically rebound's not a well-coached team. So if tonight, if the the offense is ever going to get on track, I would hope it's tonight where they can pick up on the keys that rebound kind of gives away pre-snap, run the play, line's got to block, uh, running backs got to hit the hole, you know. There were a couple times last week in Ed White, running backs running the wrong way and, and things like that. So, you know, everything's just got to gotta start clicking. Backs running the wrong way and, and things like that. So, you know, everything's just got to gotta start clicking. And so I'm hoping tonight that uh, this offense can finally do what we know they can do and kind of kind of get that running game going, you know, see if Scooby Graham and John Green can get things going and Alex Stone kind of take control of that offense and march us down the field. I mentioned it a moment ago, the Wildcats won the toss, deferred to the second half. We will be kicking off to the South End zone here as Reebok sends two guys deep to return. And the Wildcats ready to get it going here. Connor Waits is the kicker. We've got it teed up at the 40-yard line. And we're just about underway to get going here. Wade approaches the ball. He kicks it low in the air with a squib kick, and we got a flag already. Holy cow. 
Uh, Wildcats were off sides on the kick. It comes from this sideline here, and we will back it up, re tee it, and kick it again. <laughs> That's not how you want to start the game. <laughs> I, and I, listen, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so, honestly, I thought Coach Jacobson was going to lose it, but he kept his composure. And, but I just have to show you, man, penalties. You know, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot like we've done these last two and three football games that we've played. Well, that penalty comes with no time elapsed off the clock, and you don't want to have that. Five yards back we go. We're going to kick it from the 35. Rebounds return, men. No respect for our kicking game. They are all the way up to the 20-yard line. Wait, puts his foot into it. It's a good deep kick. Comes down at the 18, and here we go. Number four is Bobby Brown for Rebont. He's got the return out across the 35 to the 38-yard line, and Rebont will put it in play. First down and 10 from the 38, and the defense was on the field. That was a great play by Chase Cruz there on special teams. I tell you, I thought the Rebont uh, runner had a little crease there, and he hit the gas, and Chase Cruz was able to get out there and get a hand on him. And so a couple other wild shots can come in and corral it. Coach Rogers told us they will try to spread it out. They split two receivers to the left side. Watch out. Keep your eyes on number eight, Devin Norman here. First down and 10 from the 38, just underway from Rebalt High School. And we're set to go. First down play. Man goes in motion. Quarterback going to give him the ball on a jet sweep. But he's around the corner. He's got the 40. He's got the 45. And he's still on his feet across midfield. There is a flag on the field across the way that may be a face mask against our defense. Ah, uh, that's what you can't do against this fast rebound team. We gave up the outside on a little sweet play there. And it uh, looked like the outside linebacker, he came flashing in there, had a chance to make the play. Uh, unfortunately for that defense, he whiffed. But the flag is on rebound, so we get another crack at it. Blocking the back against rebound. I thought it was a face mask as the receiver, actually, he's listed as a tight end, number five. Good-looking player out there, 6'3", 190. He's a sophomore. He took the ball and went around the end. Would have been across midfield. Back him up with the block in the back call, and we're back to the 34. So it's first down and around 14. And an inside handoff this time, and the Wildcats are all over it. They're running back ahead. That is number one, Josh Roberts on the carry, and he's going to get maybe a yard. It'll be second and 14. Hey, I, I hope and pray that they want to live in between the tackles with that running. So that's where this Wildcat defense is always the strongest, right there in between the tackles. And that time didn't allow anybody to uh, get outside of us and shed some blocks there and picks up maybe a half a yard. Three-man front for the Cats in the middle. Jaquez Elliott made the tackle that time. Second down, 14. Here we go. Quarterback in the gun. He's got four receivers, three to the left and one to the right. Pass play coming across the middle. It's going to be picked away. A good play by Kelton Nabb as he gets his hands up. And they were trying to throw in double coverage there. And Kelton Nabb in the linebacker spot just dropped back in coverage, made the play. It'll be third and long. Who else would make that play, Mike Cruz? My goodness, 31 is just all over the field all the time. Another great play there by Kelton Nabb. Uh, you called it. We kind of backed up. Kelton Nabb in the linebacker spot just dropped back in coverage, made the play. It'll be third and long. Who else would make that play, Mike Cruz? My goodness, 31 is just all over the field all the time. Another great play there by Kelton Nabb. Uh, you called it. We kind of backed up in the coverage there. Quarterback didn't see him, and he's able to get one of those big paws on that ball. Quarterback's number 19, McWilliams. He's in the shotgun. They've split three to the left again and one to the right. Watch out for number eight on this pass play, Devin Norman. He's the guy. He looks like a great player. Pass coming across the middle. It's going to be knocked away. Nothing doing there. The pass was way high, and the Wildcats converged on the receiver. Nothing doing for the rebound offense, and the Wildcats will get the ball back on a three and out here to start the football game. And that's exactly what you want to see, Mike. They want to spread you out and throw it around a little bit, and that time the defensive backs make a great play. They're like Chris Smith and Chase Cruz there, both uh, – both on the rebound receiver and able to knock that ball loose. And so no harm there. Gave up uh, one semi-big play there, but it gets called back on the penalty. 30. The rebound punter standing at his 20. Here we go. Snaps a good one. The punt is on the way. Almost blocked, and he kicks it over to the left sideline. It's going to come dead around the 37-yard line. So we'll just trade into the field here. The Wildcats will start at our 37, first down and 10. Hey, I like it. Uh, we watched that punter kind of kick. That's a big old. Man, golly, that punter, I thought he was going to be the receiver everybody was talking about because he is about 6'5". Uh, but end over end kick there, the special teams coordinator for the Wildcats told me that he was going to block <laughs> one tonight. So we'll see how that plays out. Doesn't get the first one here, so the Wildcat offense takes the field with 10-31 left and a 0-0 zero to zero Will Connett is going to slip to the far side, two receivers to the near side. 
One back in the backfield behind Alex Bowen, the quarterback for the Wildcats. He stands at the 37, getting ready. Here we go. First and 10, Bowen takes the snap, straight give up the middle. It's going to be a carry across the 35, across the 40, and he comes green, the senior running back for the Cats, and he's going to get ahead for maybe, maybe two or three yards here. Well, on that first look from that re-ball defense, uh, we, we've talked about our struggles with somebody to kind of stretch the field here. So Reebok, they come right out. And looks like they got about eight or nine in the box. Uh, this time they are going to put a safety deep. Well, he's creeping back down now. So we go, yep, we go two wide to the far side, one wide here. Bowen in the shotgun, second down and call it eight from the 40-yard line. Bowen calls for the ball. Looks around. He's going to throw it left side. Quick pass over here. Caught, and the catch is made. And he's going to get near the first down marker. And we'll get the first down out across the 49-yard line, close to the 50. And that pass was caught by number 23, Chris Smith. And that was what we were talking about, Jackie. Some quick hitters try to loosen the defense up. And Bowen throws a good ball here, first down for the catch. Yeah, good play by Chris Smith there. He better be a little careful. That was caught by number 23, Chris Smith. And that was what we were talking about, Jackie. Some quick hitters try to loosen the defense up. And Bowen throws a good ball here, first down for the catch. Yeah, good play by Chris Smith there. He better be a little careful. He's trying to stretch and get that first down. And while I appreciate the effort, you got to protect that ball in a situation like that. So, Luckily, he does pick up the first down, and this Wildcat offense is moving. John Green in the backfield. Here we go. First down and 10, just shy of midfield for the Cats. Bowen takes the snap. He's going to give the ball to Green. Green running right. He's going to be hit in the backfield and drop for no gain on the play as Green gets back to the line of scrimmage just barely. Tried to extend that offensive line out to the right side there and just run around the corner, and Reebok's defensive line did a good job of collapsing. Yeah, and listen, Coach, Coach Josh Jacobson is a lot smarter than I'll ever be when it comes to football. But a stretch play to the outside right here, man, I like us in between the tackles. I like when John Green, Scooby Graham can just make that first cut and get down the field. That time we caught the box here with about nine guys. Pass uh, running play, and Green is hit before he even gets the football. All the way back to the 30, 45 yard line, a loss of three yards on the play, and a flag comes down after the play. And this may be a lucky break for the Cats as Rebot was celebrating that play a little bit too much. And I, I've got to believe it's on Rebot. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Trojans. Wow. That's going to help the Cats. Yeah, that's, a, that's a break because, like you said, I mean, John Green, there was nothing he could do that time. He said three yards deep in the backfield. As soon as he got the ball handed to him, almost looked like that uh, <laughs> Clowney play back in the day, man. Jadavia and Clowney yeah. from Michigan. He's in the backfield when the handoff was made and Green was hit and thrown backwards. It would have been a loss of three on the play, and the Cats would have been facing a third down and about 15. Instead of that, with the unsportsmanlike conduct, we're set up first and 10 from the Reebok 39. Fourth or fifth penalty flag we've seen here very early in this ball game, just 8.32 to go in the first quarter. But another flag down on the play here as Green was tackled for no gain on the play. Yeah, that one looks to be in the area of holding that time. Those offensive linemen, I'll tell you, they're trying to get down there and block for Green on the second level, but that Reebok defense is just so fast. So somebody reached out, grabbed the jersey there, and now we're going to back us, back us up again. All the way back near midfield to the 49-yard line of Reebok. First down and 20 now for the Cats. The 10-yard penalty is assessed, and the Cats now going backwards after the big penalty gave us the first down. Alex Bowen in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to the left. He's got a man coming under center 50. And, and that's one of the plays, you know, I was kind of talking about there where not everybody's clicking. It, you know, if the running back that time, if he holds that block a little longer on the, on the defensive end there, we may pick up, you know, Chris Smith able to get 10 or 15 yards. So just little things like that, you know, a game of inches, uh, you got to pick that block up, man. Everybody's, I know you're not getting the ball, but everybody's got a part in that play. Second down, 18. Bowen now splits three receivers to the right. One to the left. He's got John Green in the backfield. Bowen calls for the football. Fakes the handoff. A little play action. Throws it across the middle. He's got a man, and it's going to be intercepted. He had a man across the middle. The pass was too high, and it's intercepted. Going back the other way. Across midfield, across the 40, and all the way down inside Wildcat territory to around the 35-yard line goes the rebound defender. That pass was intended across the middle for Cameron Crawford. And he was open, Jackie. He was open across the middle. The pass sailed high. The safety was waiting on it. 
He takes it all the way back inside and that box it all the way back inside Wildcat territory to the thirty five and rebound now. The first turnover of the game. Yeah, they had that too high safety look on defense there. You're right. Crosser was open across the middle, and that one just kind of fell on Bowen a little bit. And the safety just sitting there like a center fielder, man, just kind of playing that ball uh, right into his hands. But uh, we, we were lucky. He looked like, it looked like the rebound defender had a wall set up in front of him. I thought he was going to take it to the house, but we pushed him out of bounds here at the Wildcat 35-yard line. So now we need this defense to step up and make a big play. Defense was on the field an awful lot last week against Ed White. They're going to be asked to do the job again here with Rebalt. First and 10 from the Cat 35. One man goes in motion. He's going to get the carry on the jet sweep coming to the right side. And a flag is down, and Kelton Nab makes the tackle. But that, once again, was number five, Chris Johnson, the big tight end, coming on the jet sweep. He picked up about four, but a flag on the play. Yeah, it looked like Zane Mobley's side. And a flag is down, and Kelton Nab makes the tackle. But that, once again, was number five, Chris Johnson, the big tight end, coming on the jet sweep. He picked up about four, but a flag on the play. Yeah, it looked like Zane Mobley, defensive end for the Wildcats number 81 down there. He was doing all he could to contain him uh, from getting that outside and was being held all the way around. Offensive lineman had him hooked. So that's going to be the call. So there again, another break for the Wildcats. Penalty filled first quarter. Yeah, 7-15 right. to go in the first quarter. And I'm telling you, we've seen a lot of flags here to start this football game. Rebalt's had their share and the Wildcats have had a few ourselves. After the penalty, though, it's going to be first down and call it 18 from the 43-yard line and a flag down behind the play here. Looks like Rebalt's got too many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They broke the huddle with 12 guys. Illegal substitution. We're going to get a timeout on the field. They're going to sort it out. And a flag down behind the play here. Looks like Rebalt's got too many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They broke the huddle with 12 guys. A legal substitution. We're going to get a timeout on the field. They're going to sort it out. We're going to take a one-minute timeout right here on WFBB. You are listening to Wildcat Football. No score from Rebound High School. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. Nita Crawford, Baker County Supervisor of Elections, is proud to support Wildcat Football. Election registration is available at the Supervisor of Elections office on North 5th Street by mail at 259-6339 or through the forms available at any post office. Elections office staff is available for you at 259-6339. That's 259-6339. Your Baker County Supervisor of Elections says, Go Wildcats! Baker High Football is being brought to you by Morell's Furniture and Mattresses. Hey folks, Paul with Morell's. Hey folks, Paul with Morell's here. We have a 19,000 square foot furniture showroom, our mattress gallery, outdoor and patio department, and our huge clearance center. Morell's Highway 90 West of I-75 on Jeff Davis Lane. Just follow the signs. Online at morells.com. M-O-R-R-E-L-L-S dot com. Baker County on the road facing the Trojans. And the Trojans just faced a first down and 18 from the holding penalty a moment ago. They give the ball to big Tyler Ellis, a running back, and he's going to push the pile all the way down inside the 40-yard line, or the 30-yard line. It will be second down and short now for Rebalt from the Wildcat 30-yard line. The quarterback again, McWilliams, he's in the shotgun. Again, number 31 right there in the middle of it. Yeah, Kelton Nabb, Robert Baker, man. Both of them made a great play there. Uh, you want to run in between the tackles, that's what's got to happen right there. Everybody's got to fill a gap. Those uh, defensive linemen, Big Jock Elliott, Zane Mobley, Chase Hancock down there, they're all trying to basically take on blockers. So those linebackers, they got to fill the holes, man. And that time they do a great job for about a one yard long. Third down and five. Now a big play here coming up from just outside the 30 yard line on the Wildcats end of the field. Quarterback McWilliams is in the gun. He surveys the scene. They were spreading it out an awful lot earlier. They're, they're confused. They're going to have to find another timeout or get a delay game here. Third down play. McWilliams. Calls for the football. He fakes the handoff, and a flag comes down in the play, and the pass is going to be incomplete. As Kelton Nab again back there around the quarterback. 
It would be worked down there at that time. Great play on defense by Scooby Graham coming from his cornerback position, came in on a little blitz when he saw the quarterback pull it down and able to force him into a, I don't know what he was trying to do there, a little spin around ballerina toss there. A good pressure by Chase Hancock and Scooby Graham. Fourth down play, fourth down and five. You don't want to jump off sides if you're the Wildcat defense here and give them an easy first down. So the Wildcats will need to be disciplined. Quarterback now is Santana Jackson, number 16. For rebound, he sends a man in motion on the fourth down play. The man went, he went forward before the play starts. They got to throw a deep down the left side, and the catch is going to be made. And that's the guy that I told you to watch out for, number eight, Devin Norman, the big wide receiver. He went up, got the ball, and they're inside the five yard line, first and goal. Jackie, the man that went in motion here, turned it up and started running forward before the play. It should have been a false start against rebound. That flag did not come out, and now rebound. And now rebounds first and goal. Yeah, and that uh, the big wide receiver you're talking about there, number eight, Devin Norman. I tell you, you mentioned him before the game, and we got probably our smallest DB. Now, one of the better DBs we got, but Tracy Washington out there covering him. That's just a mismatch on size there. Jackson is going to take the quarterback sneak and go straight ahead, and he's going to be pushed back and will not get the goal line. It will be second down. They tried the big push right behind the center there with the quarterback going quarterback sneak. It doesn't work, but Reball's still in great shape, second and goal from the half-yard line. Yeah, and on that last play, Devin Norman just able to box Tracy out, you know. I mean, just using his size there, and that, that wasn't a great route, wasn't a great pass. They just threw it up to him and let him use that size. 6'4", four, six, four, 175, he's listed on the chart, senior wide receiver for Reball. He made the play. Second down and goal now. The quarterback, Jackson, will go back to the gun. Man in for 6'4", 175. He's listed on the chart. Senior wide receiver for Rebalt. He made the play. Second down and goal now. The quarterback, Jackson, will go back to the gun. Man in motion. Second down play. He's going to look for him on the pass. It's going to be a high pass incomplete. Third down now. Third and goal from the half-yard line. Yeah, that time, that's a great job by that Wildcat defense not being fooled. Rebalt thought they could come out and maybe try to slip in a pass there on us. Bray, uh, brought that receiver in motion, thought he was going to outrun. Uh, I think that's Jacob Williams out there for the Wildcat defense, and Williams able to stay right with him. So you got third down now from the half yard line. This is going to be a huge play for this defensive line and these linebackers here. Third down play just inside the one yard line, rebound six. The Wildcats have stopped them on two downs. Let's see if we can force them into a fourth down decision. Third down play, the quarterback Jackson again sends a man in motion. Got the football team down inbounds and the touchdown for rebound to start the football game. You know what? I mean, I, I and I was misspoke earlier. It's Tracy White, not Tracy Washington. I apologize. But that's just a disadvantage to him, you know. I mean, yeah, I know you got to go up and make a play, but my goodness, he's probably giving up. Tracy White's probably all in about 5-5 five, five down there going against a 6-4 receiver, man, and they're literally just throwing that ball up, and Norman able again to just box him out of there. So I, I'm not sure what we need to do there. You know, might have to try to put a bigger defensive back on Norman see if we can't stop that jump ball pass. Rebound kicker in the ball game. They get the snap down. The kick is blocked at the line of scrimmage. And the Wildcats stop the extra point, but not before the rebound does the damage and gets on the scoreboard first here. A six to nothing lead for the Trojans as we take a one minute timeout here on 97.5 FM WFBB. Rebound scores first here from Rebound High School on a middle of the field from Rebound High School on a Football Friday night here in Jacksonville, Florida. The Wildcats of Baker County down six to nothing here with three fifty three to go in the first quarter. High kick comes down in the middle of the field. Maurice Moore is gonna take it at around the thirty. He comes across the thirty five and gets hit out of bounds around the forty one yard line. The Wildcats will start out with decent field position, but Jackie, we're gonna have to figure out how to solve that. You got a six four receiver that's on the edge over there. They got him on a big play down the field a moment ago to set up the play inside the five yard line. And that was a fourth down play. On the play here, third and goal from the half yard line. They go back to the big receiver in the end zone, and we have no answer. Well, as volunteer coaches, and we're surrounded by them tonight, Mike, and the stands on the break, we're talking about, we're looking down the whole side. Who can cover that kid, you know? And so you're right, we are going to have to find somebody because, again, Tracy White is not in bad position. I mean, he, he's playing great football and has all year. 
uh, that cornerback position, but he is right. We are going to have to find somebody because, again, Tracy White is not in bad position. I mean, he, he's playing great football and has all year uh, that cornerback position, but he is just outmatched against a much taller receiver for rebound. Well, the only answer for a play like that is to get pressure on the quarterback, and so far the Wildcats on those plays have not gotten great pressure against Jackson as he stood back there and had plenty of time to throw both footballs. So I, if we don't have anybody else to cover him, we're going to have to get somebody in there and get some hits on the quarterback. Well, you know, and even when you try that, he's literally through that quarterback. Getting, he's just throwing it almost as high as he can, you know. So I agree with you. you got to try to hit him, but he's getting rid of that football pretty quick. First down play for the Cats. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. First down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Alex Bowen. In the shotgun, takes the snap, gives to Green. Straight ahead. Green's got some running room. There he goes, 45. Green across the 48, fumbles the football, and Revolt has got it. John Green put the ball in turnover on the night. Here in the first quarter, two turnovers against this Wildcat offense. And Revolt, again, is going to have good field position here inside the Wildcat 45. Yeah, and that time, you know, I'm not making an excuse for John Green, but it looked like he tried to cut it off, and it almost looked like he hit his own blocker. Uh, and the ball pops loose. Uh, he had about he was five yards fast where I finally saw the ball rolling. So not exactly sure what happened, but um, it didn't look like a big hit or anything like that. But you got to hang on to the football, especially when you're on your side of the field. And a flag down on the play again. Rebound breaks the huddle with 12 guys, and they're going to get an illegal substitution penalty here. It'll back them up five yards. That'll help the Cats. But, Jackie, I told you a minute ago, Last week against Ed White, we had the defense on the field for a long time in the game. Here in the first quarter, we're seeing the same story. Yeah, but hey, I'm going to tell you, just like we talked about on the break, Mike, we must have flipped our headsets over to the coaches because they got Jacob Williams on the 49-yard line. Jackson, the quarterback, in the shotgun. He's going to look, fakes the handoff and throws across the middle. It's going to be incomplete. The Wildcats had a guy with the ball go right through his hands, hit him in the worst spot it could, and it could have been an interception going the other way. Now that's why they play defense. Mike. <laughs> that's what we've always said. Uh, hit him in the worst possible place right between the numbers, and it goes incomplete. A little play action that time from Rebault. The first down handoff fake up the middle, and they go through the middle of the field, and it was incomplete. And that, again, was the big receiver, Norman, coming across trying to make the catch. Second down, 15, rebound with the football from the 49-yard line of the Cats. Two receivers right, one to the left. Now they send a man in motion. Jackson calls for the football. He's going to give it to the running back, coming right side. He's got a hold running downhill, and he's going to get about six yards down to the 42-yard line, where it will bring up a third down and nine situation for rebound. Yeah, that's a big third down here, third and nine for this rebound team. Up six to nothing with... Three ten left in the first quarter, and we've got to get this defense off the field, Mike. Three-man line across the front for the Cats. Chase Hancock on the right side, Elliott in the middle, and then Mobley on the left side. And four backers in the middle of the field. Now we get a corner come up to the line of scrimmage. Third down play. They were in the backfield. A huge play right there by who else? Number 31, Kelsey Nash. As he clogs the middle and forces a punt here for Rebal. that was a huge play for Kelsey Nash. Monday night. Kelton Nav, great young man and a good linebacker for this wild kid. Great play by 31. 31, two weeks ago was our Farm Bureau player of the game. Came to the coaches show on Monday night. Kelton Nav, great young man and a good linebacker for this Wildcat football team is always around. There we go. And there goes the punt ball. The Cats get in there, block the punt, and we're going to have the ball inside rebound territory. <laughs> I'm going to say it now. I'm going to tell you who assured me a ton of my stuff. Ron Staples, the special teams coordinator for this Wildcat football team, assured me they were going to block the punt tonight. And here it is in the first quarter with 210 left. J- Jackie, he met me at my truck coming into the ball game, and he showed me the index card where he had the block punt set up. We almost got it the first time. That time we do get it. I'm not sure which Wildcat got a hand on it, but. It's going to give the Cats momentum, and we're set up now, first and ten, from the rebound 45. 
after the punt block. The Cats trail six to nothing with two ten to go in the first get. And I'm not sure which Wildcat got a hand on it, but it's going to give the Cats momentum. And we're set up now, first and ten from the rebound forty five after the punt block. The Cats trail six to nothing with two ten to go in the first quarter. Alex Bowen. In the shotgun, is going to give the ball to Green. Green's running middle, and he's going to be hit at the line again. And no room to run for the Cat offense as John Green is tackled at the line of scrimmage. Hey, man, that was Scooby Graham down there, Mike. I know it's oh. the sun right in our eyes, so it's hard to see. But I think I saw Green over here on the sideline. So they got Scooby Graham in the game now. But I tell you, I don't care who you got back there. If this yeah. offensive line can't hold up. I mean, they're, they're getting hit before they're even getting back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, whichever ball carrier, we got no yards. It's second down and 10 from the 45. Bowen in the gun, two receivers to the left and one to the right. Bowen looks to throw. He's got a man over here, and the pass is going to be incomplete. Nice defense on the play as Bowen was looking this side for number 23, and that is receivers to the left and one to the right. Bowen looks to throw. He's got a man over here, and the pass is going to be incomplete. Nice defense on the play as Bowen was looking this side for number 23, and that is Chris Smith. Smith broke in, a little slant play, and the ball was knocked away by the rebound defender setting up third and ten. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, but that, I like it. You know what I mean? We, we said we needed to get that short and intermediate passing game going, and so far tonight, the pass attempts that we have had have been those short and intermediate routes, so... You like the opportunities with yeah. short and intermediate. You get the ball out of the quarterback's hands, maybe loosen up the running game just a little bit. Third down and 10, Bowen in the gun, takes the snap. He looks downfield. Looking downfield still, Bowen's going to be hit and sacked in the backfield. He waited too long to get rid of the ball. And we are going to be punting from our 47, or from Rebault's 47, after a three and out for the Cats. We did get the block caught and had great field position. The Cats don't do anything with it. And we'll turn it back over. Been on the field the majority of that. So the offense got to get something going next time we get a chance with the ball. Bowen drops back in punt formation here. He's going to get his foot into it around our 45. A high kick is going to come down to the middle of the field, and the Cats are going to surround it. It's going to be downed right there around the 23-yard line, and Reball will have it first and 10 from there. We just right at 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We'll keep it here to the end of the quarter, and we'll take a couple-minute break after that. But... To sum up this quarter, Jackie, penalties, sloppy play, and turnovers. Yeah, I mean, 6 nothing rebound right now with 40 seconds left in the first quarter. And like you said, I, the, the one thing I do like about this, they haven't really proven that they can drive on them. In a couple big plays, we held them the fourth down, they threw a jump ball. Held them the third down at the one-yard line, they throw a jump ball. So not sure if they can drive down the field on this Wildcat defense, but now's our chance to flip the field. They split out four receivers this tackle behind the line of scrimmage. A good job of pursuit by the Wildcat defense there. They tried a quick hitter to Norman to get him the ball in space, and the Cats blew it up. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, I lead big Jacquez Elliott from the defensive tackle position, Mike. Gets all the way out there to help make that stop in 15 seconds now. Looks like they may let the quarter run out. Reball's going to try to come to the line here. The clock's ticking down under 10 seconds to go here in the quarter. And I don't think they're going to get this playoff, Jackie. That's going to end the first quarter. Rebalt with a 6 to nothing lead heading to the second quarter here. We're going to take a two-minute timeout, and we'll be back with more Baker County Wildcat football right here on 97.5 FM WFBB. the second quarter here. Quarterback Jackson drops back and swings it deep. They had a man wide open running across midfield. Our cornerback was able to come back and tackle him after he made the catch midfield. They get inside the 40-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 rebound on a big play to start the second quarter. Exactly what we were talking about pregame. You cannot get caught looking in the backfield if you're a DB. First down play, Jackson and the shotgun. They send a man in motion here. Cat's trying to get a, some rush on the quarterback. The quarterback, Jackson, pulls it down, and he's going to run it himself. He's across the 35, across the 30. A first down for Rebalt, down to the Wildcat 28-yard line. And Rebalt's just pulling, pulling some different plays here, giving the Wildcats some different looks on defense. And the Cat defense is, they, first of all, Jackie, they've been on the field a long time here in the first quarter, but now uh, several big plays on this possession, and Rebalt is in great shape, first and 10 from the Wildcat 28. And as I tell you right now, the defense is getting the business from head coach Jamie Rogers. They are getting the business. I don't know what he saw. 
But, man, he is not happy right now with that Wildcat defense. If he calls a timeout, get into him a little bit. And then in the business from head coach Jamie Rogers, they are getting the business. I don't know what he saw, but, man, he is not happy right now with that Wildcat defense. If he calls a timeout, get into him a little bit. And then just turns around and walks off. So maybe that's what it's going to take to fire him up, man. I don't know. you got to get something, though. you got to get a spark. We, we have started this game the same way we started every game this season. There's no life at all, no leadership, which we mentioned earlier in the week. So, I mean, somebody's got to step up. you got to make a big play here. And, and, golly, man, get somebody fired up. Get the fans fired up. Get the rest of the team fired up. Gonna have to, gonna have to get somebody fired up because the Cats right now in a six to nothing hole. And Rebot with the ball first and ten from our 28. Great field position here. And we need to turn this over. They had two turnovers against us in the first quarter. It's time for us to return the favor here in the second. Quarterback Jackson, he's got three receivers to the right side, two receivers to the left. By Rebot. First down and ten. Jackson takes the snap, looks to throw the football. He's under pressure. Hancock got a hand on him. And it's almost picked off across the middle. Chase Hancock came off the right end and had a good run at quarterback Jackson. Might have tipped his arm as he threw the football. It'll be second down. Yeah, big Chase Hancock there with a great play. I thought he was going to get to the quarterback, but he's able to pressure that throw. And uh, quarterback for rebound throws it in the no man's land. And Chris Smith almost comes up with a turnover a week. Truly needed. Desperately needed. Second down and 10 now from the 28-yard line. Six to nothing rebound, 11-22 to go second quarter. Mike Cruz, Jackie Baker here with the call, 97.5 FM, WFBB. Jackson, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Second down play. They're going to give it on a jet sweep. And the Wildcats force a fumble. The Wildcats force a fumble. And the Wildcats tell them that they're going to recover the fumble. And the Cats get the turnover. You saw it, Mike, now Tim Russell and the Wildcats. Maybe that's the spot we need, Mike, to get this offense going. They ran the jet sweep coming around the near sideline. The Wildcats put him in the backfield, forced the fumble, shut him down, fought for it, and got it. And we're going to be faced with a first down and 10 now, right at the 35-yard line. The Cats with a good opportunity here coming off the turnover. So now, Jackie, we're not even we're not even just a minute into the second quarter, and there's three turnovers in this football game, two for the Wildcats and one for Rebo. Oh, Alex Bowen now sits one receiver to the left and one to the right. He's in the shotgun. Bowen takes the snap. We're going to run it middle. Run it back goes straight ahead. And he's going to pick up good yardage out across the 40-yard line to the 41, a six-yard gain on first down. And number five, Scooby Graham there. He, I believe he's a sophomore this year, Mike. Right, is that right? Uh, Jeff Grader, that's Jeff right. Yeah, sophomore man, and I'll tell you, he he has a chance to be the now. Yeah, number five, Scooby Graham there. He, I believe he's a sophomore this year, Mike. Right, is that right? Uh, Jeff Grader, that's Jeff right. Yeah, sophomore man, and I'll tell you, he he has a chance to be the next great Wildcat running back. I mean, he moves good. He's gained a little size in the off season with those workouts that uh, Coach McDonald and Coach Jacobson have put him through, and just a, a really good, got great vision, you know, for a young kid. And so hopefully, maybe this offensive line, you know, wants to get a push, and Scooby Graham can find the hole. Second down play, call it second down and four from the 41 yard line. The Cats send one receiver left, one to the right. Bowen in the shotgun. Alex Bowen. Calls for the football. Again, they give the ball to Graham. Graham's across the 45, and he squirts out near the 50 to the 48-yard line. A first down for the Cats. So two good runs and a roll for the Cat offensive line. And they need to dominate this quarter and see if we can get back on the scoreboard. And a first down, man, gets this. Squirts out near the 50 to the 48-yard line. A first down for the Cats. So two good runs and a roll for the Cat offensive line. And they need to dominate this quarter and see if we can get back on the scoreboard. And a first down, man, gets this crowd into it a little bit, kind of playing that hard-nosed Baker County football now. The offensive line getting after it. Scoopy Graham, two good runs there. Let's see if we can just ride this all the way to the end zone, Mike. First down and 10 near midfield for the Cats. Alex Bowen in the shotgun. One receiver left, one to the right. One back and Kelton Nab in there at blocking back. First down and 10. Here we go. Alex Bowen calls for the football, takes the snap, going to give it again, straight middle handoff, and this time, Reball's going to get a shoestring tackle, or Graham had a little bit more running room through the middle, but a tackle from behind is going to keep him to 
a one yard gain. Yeah, and that time, you know, you go for those running backs to have that vision and just, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a slow pace, but he's just trying to wait on the yard gain. Yeah, and that time, you know, you go for those running backs to have that vision and just, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a slow pace, but he's just trying to wait on the hole, you know, trying to have the, have the right timing for that hole to open up and that rebound defense. I mean, just too fast coming from the outside where we're releasing our tackles and guards from over there to make a play. And that's not what we want to see. Chase Hancock coming off the field here, stoops down and has the trainer come out. He's going to talk to him. It'll be second down and nine for the Cats when we come back. We're going to take a 30-second timeout right here on 97.5 WFBB. Second down play for Scooby Graham. The Wildcats run the ball straight middle again on a second down and nine play. Chase Hancock was able to get up on his own power there. He's coming to the side. Looks like he might get that ankle taped, and he looks to be fine. But now the Wildcats have one to the right. Alex Bowen in the shotgun. The official holding up play here for just a moment. Six to nothing rebound lead. 8.47 to go in the first half. Some type of equipment issue over there. The official's trying to get worked out. They've got it worked out, and here we go. Third down, call it eight. The Cats, Alex Bowen in a shotgun. Surveys the scene, calls the snap, looks across the way. He's going to be pressured, and he's going to throw it out of bounds over here looking for Will Kinda. That pass goes out of bounds, and the Cats will be forced to punt again. 8.33 to go, second quarter. And Jackie, aside from a first down here and a first down there, the offense just has not gotten it going. No, not at all, Mike. And we're trying, you know, Alex Bowen, he's, he's trying to pitch it around a little bit back there. They're trying to get the run game going and just can't find any rhythm in the offense whatsoever. Fourth down, fourth down and eight for the Cats. We'll send Bowen back to punt the football away. Rebolt sends two deep men. Been close to hitting the return man inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first down and ten. Hey, about about something probably the bleachers, Mike. <laughs> First down and 10 for Rebolt now. They've got a 6 to nothing lead. They've got the football, but a great punt by Alex Bowen to pin them deep there. Yeah, that was, that was a good punt by Alex Bowen. Uh, this defense, this time, man, uh, we, we got lucky, got the turnover. I'm not going to call it lucky. I mean, that was a great play, great play by the defense. But now you got them pinned deep and a chance to really – I haven't seen anything out of their punting game that leads me to believe he's going to boom a 70-yard or if you can stop them down here. But you got a man up, man. Bow your back right here, pin him deep, and let's go get the ball back and score. 8.22 left in the second quarter. Rebound up six to nothing. Going to give a shout-out to our statistician, Justin Thomas. He's not with us tonight. He had to go out of town and attend a wedding this weekend. So, Justin, we need you here because uh, if there's one stat I'd like to look at right now, Jackie, that have played so far, I'm guessing Rebound's probably had the ball about 10 minutes. First down play. Jackson's going to give it to the running back. Running right, that's Roberts. He's going to be hitting the backfield, and he's going nowhere. About a three-yard loss on the play for Rebound. The Cat defense pursues to the right corner that time and throws Robert down for a three-yard loss. Delton Ave again on that play, and I, that's a Justin Thomas. He does a great job for us, but I'm going to give you a telling stat. I have <laughs> never been to a wedding during football. Season. <laughs> Shame on you, Justin. <laughs> That's man, that's man code. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> Second down and 12. Here we go. Jackson in the gun again. He's got two receivers left and one to the right, one back in the backfield. Here we go. And uh, Whistle's going to stop play here. The coach for Rebalt came down and called timeout here really quickly. He didn't like what he saw. That's going to give us time for a quick commercial timeout here. 7.30 in the backfield. Here we go. And uh, Whistle's going to stop play here. The coach for Rebalt came down and called timeout here really quickly. He didn't like what he saw. That's going to give us time for a quick commercial timeout here. 7.38 to go in the second quarter. The Wildcats trail 6 to nothing. We'll take a 30-second timeout on 97.5 WFBB. We welcome you back here to Rebalt High School over on the north side of Jacksonville. 7.38 to go, second quarter. Rebalt with a 6 to nothing lead over the Baker County Wildcats here. Jackson, second down play, second down and 12. 
He drops the throw. He's going to throw one right. Oh, it's going to be broken yeah. up again. The Wildcats get a hand on that. Was that now again? That is Kelton now again falling in the cover. Hey, man, I'm going to take him out. He's going to run the season out this week of practice. We're going to practice getting two Great play by Kelton now there. Kelton Nab has been all over the football game tonight here on the defensive side of the ball. Forces a third down and 12, and this is one of those flip the field positions. If you can get them off the field right here, force a punt, the Wildcats would be assured of having decent field position to start the drive. Third down play. Jackson in the shotgun. He's got two receivers left. Two backs in the backfield. Jackson calls for the ball. They're going to run the football right side, and a hole opens up, and the running back's going to get the first down and more. He's still on his feet. 35, 30, 45. Across midfield, and not tackled until he gets to the Wildcat 46-yard line, and I don't think the Wildcats expected a run on that third and 12 play. Uh, he may not expect it, but you got to stop it, Mike. Uh, you know, uh, arm tackles left and right. Nobody wants to step up and and hit the running back. I mean, my goodness, you got them pinned on their own three-yard line there. You got to make a play, but rebound is huge run for rebound there. Number one, Josh Roberts. We had a chance to get him off the field again, Jackie, and that one was demoralizing after the play. A five-yard penalty is being assessed against rebound, which is going to put them right back at midfield. So, huge run that time. They come all the way from the five-yard line out to the 45 of Baker County, so 50-yard gain for Josh Roberts on third down. Jeez, uh, you're right. I just kind of took the wind out of everybody's sails there a little bit. Not that we had a lot of momentum, but you stop them for three plays. You can't give that one up. First down and 10. Here we go, rebound. From the 49-yard line, they run the ball straight up the middle. Wildcats had a chance to hit him in the backfield, but he's going to get ahead for about two yards. Across midfield, it'll be second down and eight. That time, big number 50, Jock Rose Elliott from his defensive tackle position just completely blows it up, but you just got to make the play back there. He was on a similar way to get ahead for about two yards. Across midfield, it'll be second down and eight. That time, big number 50, Jock Rose Elliott from his defensive tackle position just completely blows it up, but you just got to make the play back there. He was on a similar what happened to John Green earlier. Jock Rose was back there in the backfield on the handoff. And the running back able to squeeze out of there for a two-yard gain. Six-nothing rebound here, under six, seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Jackson, the quarterback for rebound, calls for the football. He's going to fake the handoff and run it right side, quarterback keeper, and he gets to the 46-yard line of Baker County. About two yards on the play. He's going to bring up another third down, third down and six. I got a feeling, and, and one of the rebound players shaking up on the play, but I've got a feeling, Jackie, here, depending on if they pick up one or two on third down, they're probably in four-down territory. Yeah, have not shown me any inclination so far that they're going to play conservative on offense. So you're right. I think this is four-down territory. Your offense isn't able to really get anything going in the first half so far with 6-16 left in the second quarter. Normally, you know, normally I would say four down territory when a team is a little bit deeper, you know, into the opposing team's territory. But the Wildcat defense has been on the field. You know, I was talking about time of possession a moment ago. The Wildcat defense has been on the field all night. Three balls got the ball at the Wildcat 46. You got a third down and about six yards. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I, you know, I'm not trying to be too much in the rebound coaching staff's corner here, but I'm thinking if you're on their sideline, you're thinking we've got two plays to get the first down. That's what I'm thinking. Man, no, I agree with you. And I, and I honestly, field position is not my biggest concern. It's just the ineptitude on offense so far, Mike. The, I mean, they just, we've not struck any fear in that rebound defense at all that we can move the ball down the field. So uh, I think, it, you know, it wouldn't be uh, – wouldn't be a terrible call. Six yard line, five fifty five, clock running here in the second quarter. Quarterback Jackson deep drop this time and a flag down. They're gonna get a delay of game. They come out of the timeout, Jackie, and can't get the playoff. That's gonna drive their coaching staff crazy. And it's gonna make it a third and ten instead of third and about six. Uh, that may change things here. So now we really need to stop, man. They line back up in that five wide set. DB's got to keep your eyes on your man. Do not peek in that backfield at the quarterback and need a big rush here from this defensive line. 
Third down, call it 10. Now, I may take back what I said about four down territory if we can get a stop here. Third down and 10. Jackson fumbles the football. He's going to get back on it. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to be sacked. And he's going to get called for intentional grounding. As he was sacked in the backfield and just threw the ball toward the sideline, they're going to call intentional grounding. But honestly, Jackie, I think he was already on the ground when he threw it. Yeah, I had a hold of that very elusive quarterback and able to drag him down to the ground. And you're right, we're going to get intentional grounding here and back them up a little more on fourth down. So, now, that man, that changes everything, Mike. Changes everything. The intentional grounding moves them all the way back. The other thing is intentional grounding is loss of down. So it's fourth down now. And as my old colleague Bobby Hart would have said, a $10 cab ride here for the first down for Reball. They're going to have to punt it away. So the Cats again. The offense will get a chance with decent field position. High snap. The Cats get a good rush on, but we're going to let this one hit around the 45 of Baker County. It's going to take a rebound roll down to the 40, and we'll take it right from there. First down and 10 from the 40-yard line. Let's take a 30-second timeout right here on 97.5 WFBB. Ferreira Funeral Services asks, how do you want to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as somebody who treated people with love and respect. How do you want to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as somebody who treated people with love and respect. I'd like to be remembered as someone who made other people feel important. I would like to be remembered as a loving husband and father. I want to be remembered as the sunshine gal who was a compassionate listener with unconditional love. How would you like to be remembered? I want to be remembered as somebody who made a difference in this world. Baker High Football is brought to you by Ferrera Funeral Services. 259-5700. Wildcats are going to carry the football out near the 45-yard line. It'll be a second down and about six coming up for the Cat offense, desperately needing to get something going here. 438 to get football out near the 45-yard line. It'll be a second down and about six coming up for the Cat offense, desperately needing to get something going here. 438 to go, second quarter. We still trail six to nothing. Mike Cruz, Jackie Baker, bringing you the action, action here from Reball High School. Alex Bowen in the gun. He's going to give the ball straight handoff. And again, Reebok's defensive front is not having anything to do with that. And it'll be third down. I don't know what's going on, my. I mean, I'm telling you, the offensive line, I don't know if they're getting up to the second level too fast, but the whole line's up on about the 50 yard line there down the field. And, but hey, listen, you got to block that initial guy first. That's the one that's getting back there to Scooby and uh, give my man some space and let him work. So here we go, third and six with a four minutes left in the second quarter, down six nothing. We need a big play here. Third down and six. Alex Bowen sends two receivers to the left. One to the right. Three forty eight on the to get a pass in this area's call. That's a great pass by Alex Bowen and a great play by Will Connor. The defender that time had kind of blanketed, but Bowen throws that little back shoulder fade there and kind of tries to come back and get it. And uh, we are going to get interference here, and that's a great play by Alex Bowen and Will Conniff there. And I tell you what, Conniff had the ball in his hands. Looked like he was going to come down with it, even with the interference. But the Cats are going to get the penalty here, so we're going to mark it off from the 44 where we're at now. Should be 15 yards. And the Cats will have the ball inside rebound territory here. They're going to set it down. First down and 10 for the Cats. Right at the 40-yard line of Reball, 3.37 to go. And, Jackie, with the way this first quarter's gone, our first half is gone, if the Cats could punch it in here, you'd have new life going into the second half. Oh, for sure, Mike. Got to get something going. Got to keep driving here. Can't stop there. Alex Bowen in the shotgun. Reball now starting to show a little sign of fatigue on the defensive side. They've got a couple of guys dinged up over there. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, if the offense can stay on the field long enough, Jackie, we can wear them down a little bit. Yeah, and that's been the biggest thing. A lot of times these teams like Reball, uh, and really about every team we play on the schedule, they don't like to be pushed on all night long, you know. And I, I think when that offensive line is clicking and really giving that defense a lot to handle, man, that's how you wear them down. But so far, this offense just hasn't been able to stay on the field long enough to do that. So maybe here 
we can put together that drive and really wear them down with three minutes to go in the second quarter. Second down, seven, Alex Bowen in the gun. He takes the snap. He's going to give the ball to Green again. Green running hard. He's inside the 45, down to the 40, inside the 35-yard line. A good carry for John Green and a first down on the play. The Cats are going to move the chains. Yeah, move the chains. I'm like you, Mike. I'd like to see a little tempo here. You are. When, as soon as you get a little momentum, picked up a big five to get the play in here. Uh, snap the ball. Let John Green tote that thing. You like it when I use that word, didn't you? Yeah, tempo. Man, that was a good one. I used to have a Ford Tempo. You ever seen one of those? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> Before my time, man. <laughs> First down 10. Here we go. Bowen hands the ball to Green. Green running hard again. He's going to get driven back after a gain of two yards. He was running hard downhill that time, met in the hole by a linebacker. It'll be second down and eight. But I'll tell you what it did do. I, like we were talking about, you do get a little tempo there. And the offensive line that time able to stand that defensive line of rebound up. They're not in the backfield like they have been on the majority of those running plays. While we've got a second, Jackie, in between plays here, I want to let all the folks listening in tonight know that you can also join us on Monday nights. We have our Wildcat Radio Coaches Show on Monday nights and have a good opportunity to have you know, members of the Booster Club, members of the community come down and join us. We're there at Crystal River Seafood for join us. On Monday nights, we have our Wildcat Radio Coaches Show on Monday nights and have a good opportunity to have, you know, members of the Booster Club, members of the community come down and join us. We're there at Crystal River Seafood from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock on the air here, 97.5 FM WFBB. I've got some exciting things to tell you about the Coaches Show. Might have some things to give away. Might be some opportunities for you to come down. We'll talk about that more on our halftime break in just a moment. 2.15 to go, second quarter. Six to nothing rebound. Wildcats with the ball. Second and eight. Bowen takes the snap. Looking deep right side. Will kind of broke away from the defender but can't make the catch. The ball just a little bit over his head that time and just past the outstretched arms of Will Connor. Yeah, that time he and Bowen weren't quite on the same page. Uh, again, Bowen tried to throw that little back shoulder fade and kind of was streaking right up the field towards the, uh, the inside half mark there. Uh, but again, another good pass. Uh, yeah, that time he and Bowen weren't quite on the same page. Uh, again, Bowen tried to throw that little back shoulder fade and kind of was streaking right up the field towards the uh, the inside half mark there. Uh, but again, another good pass. Kind of able to break away from the defender, man. You, we got to complete some of those. But if nothing else, we're keeping them honest here. It'd be nice if you know you just were able to complete one of those passes. And get a big play here. The Wildcats have been held scoreless for this first half. 2.05 to go until the halftime break. And I think now, Jackie, the tables are turned and we're in four down territory. We need to get some positive yards here on third down. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20. We are right at the 25 yard line. They don't have the, they don't have the yard lines marked really good here at Rebound High School, but we're right at the 25. Third down and seven. Bowen in the gun, looking to pass. He's flushed out of the pocket. Good rush for rebound. Bowen's going to try to run 25. Third down and seven. Bowen in the gun, looking to pass. He's flushed out of the pocket. Good rush for rebound. Bowen's going to try to run it. He's going to be sacked. Two-yard loss on the sack. And now I don't know if we're in four-down territory or not. Yeah, it looks like they're going to run Connor Wade out on the field. Uh, no, no. <clears throat> You're right. We're in four-down territory. Well, you almost have to be. You, you you trust your defense with less than two minutes to go in the half if you if you give them a long field here. Fourth down from inside the 30. We're at the 27. Call it fourth down and eight to go. Going to need a big play, though. Minute and a half to go. Second quarter. Alex Bowen in the shotgun. Wildcats still trailing by six. Bowen under pressure. Fires one down the field, and the receiver just didn't even come back to the football. He just stood out there, and the pass ball is incomplete while Bowen takes a shot from the lineman, and it'll be first down, rebound football going the other way. And I don't know. I, you know, time again, they're basically bringing every one of them back who started last year, and that time again, I don't know who missed the block. I didn't see it, but a defensive tackle just runs free right in Alex Bowen's face, so no time to plant his feet and release that football. First down rebound, 121 to go in the half now. Six to nothing they lead, and the Wildcats back on defense again. That was the most promising drive the Wildcat offense had, but Jackie's still unable to score any points. Quarterback Jackson for rebounds got one receiver to the far right side and two receivers to the left. 
They're going to run the football behind Robert straight ahead, and he's not going anywhere. Wildcat defense across that middle with Kelton Nab just clogging the hole. Nothing doing. And I'm getting abs up around 10 tackles tonight. Oh, yeah. Out of minimum, he's played a lot of offense, too. So basically staying true to what he's done all season. You see him out there on every defensive play, and then he turns right around and goes to block for Alex Bowen on offense. Two batted balls for Kelton Nab, too, in the linebacker spot to keep passes from being completed. So he's having a big night. Under a minute to go now, Rebal. Looking to get a big play here before halftime. They lead six to nothing. Second down and ten. Jackson in the shotgun takes a snap. They're going to run the football again. They run it to the right side. And again, the Wildcat defense stuffs it. So, depending on what happens here in the last 30 seconds, it looks like it's probably going to be a six to nothing game at halftime. We did defer to the second half, Jackie, so we will get the ball to start the second half. And talk some Wildcat football as we go, but my goodness, what's got to change in the second half for the Wildcats to get in the end zone? Yep, for them. And if you want the whole machine, you know, every gear to start turning uh, to get a little excitement down here, you know, as the, the offense has got to score some points, get that defensive break, and let them know, listen, guys, we're here with you. You make the big stop, we're going to go down and score for you. And this is just not happening. You can see that defense, I mean, tired, hands on their hips, just wore down. So the offense in the second half, I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they got to do, but we got to get something going. Big third down play coming up here for Rebolt. Jackson in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's going to look to throw, rolls to his right. He's hit as he throws. Oh, 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 oh. The ball's intercepted, and we're going to take it back for a touchdown. The Wildcats have scored a touchdown on an interception here at the end of the half. A huge play by the Wildcat defense. Somebody got in there and hit the quarterback, Jackie, and when he did, the ball floated up. Number 50 just wears that touchdown on an interception here at the end of the half. A huge play by the Wildcat defense. Somebody got in there and hit the quarterback, Jackie, and when he did, the ball floated up. Number 50 just wears that one. Been on there all night, Mike. The ball floated up, a linebacker came up, and I'm not even sure. Robert Baker, the touchdown maker. Robert Baker, the touchdown maker. But the Cats can't do it on offense, but we did it on defense. A big play by Jaquez Elliott has tied the game at six here as Robert Baker has ran it in for a touchdown, a 40-yard return for Baker. And now the kicker for the Wildcats is Connor Waite, and he's going to try to make it a one-point lead for the Cats. The snap's a good one, and the kick is on the way. And it is good. Oh, they say it's no good wide right. The kick looks good from here. Wow. Oh, my goodness, Jackie. I thought he split the upright. Wow. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're set down the middle, but apparently missed right just a bit. And that's a shame. So we go 6-6 six to six now with 27 seconds left in the second quarter. And, hey, man, I feel like I'm here for the 2012 Gators. And if the offense can't get it done, we'll just count on the defense to give a point tonight. Yeah, there's nothing worse than a, than a play-by-play announcer calling the kick good when it's not any good. But, Jackie, I thought it was good. are going to kick it up high here to the far sideline. It's going to be out of bounds. And we didn't even try to get the ball. As the ball goes out of bounds, they should get the ball at the 40-yard line, but only 26 seconds on the clock here. Jackie, you talk about huge plays in a football game, and that is one of the biggest I've seen in a while. Jaquez Elliott gets back there, puts a hit on Jackson just as he throws the football. It floats up in the air. The linebacker, just as you see on TV on those sports center plays, runs under it. And has, you know, the caravan to the end zone there, about 40 yards on the return. Beautiful play, the linebacker for the Cats getting the touchdown. So it's going to make the score even at halftime, assuming nothing else happens here in the last 26 seconds. But 
talk about momentum and the change and the way things go in a football game. That that just totally changed the energy level for this football team. Ah, right, right, right. You you hit it around to him, Mike. Pressure. It's all about pressure on the quarterback, and he has made some terrible decisions. And we can get back there and get on him, and that time again, football game. That that just totally changed the energy level for this football team. Ah, right, right, right. You you hit it around to him, Mike. Pressure. It's all about pressure on the quarterback, and he has made some terrible decisions. And we can get back there and get on him, and that time again, Jock says that is back there, and instead of throwing it away or taking the sack with 30 seconds left, he throws a pick six to Robert Baker. Jackson in the gun. He's going to hand the ball right side, and the running back's going to get ahead to around midfield before he's tackled there. And depending on what Rebalt wants to do, we could see the clock run out, but they will call timeout here. And let's just set up the halftime show, Jackie. Once again, we want to thank everyone for listening in and all the sponsors who helped make this radio broadcast possible. Uh, but want to thank especially our folks over at Jerome Baptist Church. John Meadows is back there manning the production line tonight. And, John, hopefully you're uh, hearing a good ball game, 6-6. Six to six. We're going to be heavy heading into the halftime locker room, it looks like. Uh, but thanks to John and all he does for uh, the broadcast and all the folks over at Glen Baptist Church for making this uh, football broadcast possible on Friday night. And uh, coming up in just a few minutes, we'll have our Farm Bureau halftime report. I brought to you each week by Florida Farm Bureau. And we will talk about this football game, some of the things that have happened here in the first half. And then, Jackie, I've got some good ones for you. We've got some good games coming up tomorrow. College football is back on the big screen, and we'll be talking about that. So you won't want to go away. Oh, that's a false start. My goodness. It should have been a false start on the left tackle here, and they didn't call it, and the running back's going to get ahead to around the 40 of the Wildcats. But clock's going to stop quickly for the first down, and they're going to try to line it up and throw a pass here. But that that left tackle, he was moving before the play. They did not get the flag. We've seen flags for this ball. should stop seconds to go. They're just going to spike the ball here, so they've got one play before halftime. But the clock continued to run. They called an incomplete pass. <laughs> well, if he's spiking the ball, it should have. It should be incomplete, but it should stop the clock. I mean, it is an incomplete pass if you spike it, so it should stop the clock right there. They should have about eight seconds to go. <laughs> the back judge, he's waving around like this, and the clock continued to run, but now they are going to take five seconds back on the clock, and you can't go, golly, we don't give up anything big here. Well, you can't. you got to send everybody back to the goal line here and just protect. You came back. You know you fought. You got a big defensive touchdown there a few moments ago. And you got to get off the field here with the score the same so that you can come out in the second half and hopefully take over as we've, as we've now gotten the game back evened up. Five seconds on the clock. Jackson's in the shotgun. Rebound's got the football. Down inside rebound territory. Around the 25-yard line. This is a moment like Tracy White might take the second in a row back to the end zone. But he gets tackled around the 25-yard line. So, Jackie, that just is a crazy first half of football. We're going to talk about all that more when we come back. We're going to catch our breath. We'll take about a five-minute break here on 97.5 FM WFBB. But don't go away. Come back and listen as we'll come back with our Florida Farm Bureau halftime show in just a few moments. The Wildcats have six. Rebound has six. We'll take a break. We'll be back. You're listening to Wildcat Football right here on 97.5 WFBB. And we welcome you back here to Rebalt High School over on the north side of Jacksonville. I am Mike Cruz, and I'm joined, as always, by Jackie Baker, bringing you all the action, 2018 Baker County Wildcat football. And, Jackie, good to be back on the air with you again here tonight. With you again here tonight as the Wildcats have a 6-6 to ball game going with Rebalt. It's been one of those back-and-forth affairs. Let's just talk about it for just a moment as we welcome you in here to the Farm Bureau Halftime show. My man, Jack Baker, Justin Webb, Ricky Duggar, big supporters of Wildcat football and helping make us possible each week. And Jackie, the Wildcats came out. We talked about it before the game. Anytime you play a football game, you know, the last couple of weeks, the Wildcats offensively just haven't, haven't gotten it going. Well, that continues again here tonight. You know, we don't, I, I mentioned earlier, we don't have Justin Thomas with us for the stats, but Wildcats having trouble on offense. I mean, we, we, we have, 
sustained a couple of drives where we moved the ball a little bit between the 30s. But other than that, we, you know, the passing game is not on. We did get a pass interference play a moment ago on a, on a play. But just overall, from an offensive standpoint, nothing's clicking. And I think you mentioned it earlier, you know. But other than that, we, you know, the passing game is not on. We did get a pass interference play a moment ago on a, on a play. But just overall, from an offensive standpoint, nothing's clicking. And I think you mentioned it earlier. You know, I think we expected this offensive line, senior driven offensive line, to really open some holes and make some running room for these running backs. And that's just not happening right now. Rebalt and Ed White did the same thing last week. And even going back, uh, St. Augustine did it to some extent to really, really clog the middle of that line and keep the running backs from getting free. And this offense, the way it's driven, you know, if you can't run the football on first down, it's not really opening it up for what you do on the other down. So they're going to have to find some creativity, going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what we can do offensively. But right now, it's not working. Yeah, you know, the thing is, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm not an offensive guru. I'm not an offensive line coach. This is what it looks like from the stands. They're going to figure out what we can do offensively. But right now, it's not working. Yeah, you know, the thing is, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm not an offensive guru. I'm not an offensive line coach. This is what it looks like from the stance. They're getting beat up down there. You got to fire off the ball. You got to hit somebody. A couple times, a couple of them just standing around. They look like they touch the soul. But what well, I'm also the ball is set high. You know, last year we had a very powerful offense. At any given time, we could run the ball when we needed to. And I'm talking about not just run the ball. I'm talking about five, six yard runs. I'm talking about breaking seventy and eighty yard runs. And we just haven't seen it this year. And I'm not sure what the answer is. Again, there are four to five offensive linemen are returning from last year. So something's got to give here. you got to get that running game going. That's been our bread and butter for the last, you know, two seasons on the Coach Rogers. So whatever we got to do, I don't know what it is. Put another guy in there. Put Kelton Nav in there, to, you know, the block. I'm not sure what the call is here. Open up John Green and Scooby Graham. Yeah, I mean, again, you're exactly right. And, and so – Going from a state championship type football team that went all the way to the Class 5A state championship game last year and coming back here losing 26 seniors, Seth Page isn't here. Josh Aga is not here. You know, those guys that, you know, those skill players, Lee Graham, some of those guys that, you know, would just make some unbelievable plays last year, those guys have to be replaced. You know, Stuby Graham, like you said, he's a sophomore in here. Uh, we've got some other guys on the offensive side of the ball that I feel like they're going to break out sooner rather than later, but it hasn't happened yet. So, meanwhile, the defense is having to pick up the slack. And so, the defense last week holds Ed White to eight points in the game. They held St. Augustine to 14 points in the game a couple weeks ago. Tonight, you know, Rebalt looked like they were going to find some things in that passing game, and since then, the defense has really taken over. So, hats off to all the things that we said about the offensive side. We come back in the second quarter, we get three turnovers from them. So, five turnovers in this game so far. We got three in the second quarter, two two uh, interceptions and a fumble. We take one back to the house for some points. So, even though the offense couldn't get any points, the defense got some points on the board there. So, it's a new ball game coming out in the second half. We will get the ball to start the second half. What would you like to see? Uh, anything. Anything on offense, you know. And I put my hat to that defense because if there was a unit that I thought was going to be real bad this year, it was that defense. We have one returning starter on that defense, Mike, and that's Kelton Knapp. There were some guys that got some playing time over there last year, but one true starter in Kelton Knapp on that defense but they have manned up all season long. Like you said, the offense has set up 13 points a game. Now, one win and one loss, and even in the loss, it was a 13-13 loss to St. Augustine. So the defense was doing their job. The offense has got offense has set up 13 points a game. Now, one win and one loss, and even in the loss, it was a 13-13 loss to St. Augustine. So the defense was doing their job. The offense has got to get something going, anything right now, to put some points on the board. And uh, you just, you got to get it figured out. You know, I, we came out to start the game, and a little short passing game, you know. I felt like it was, uh, was working for us. And that was what Coach Jacobson said he was going to do this week. They were going to practice uh, the short passing game, go back and look at some film from the A.C. when we played them in the spring because the offense, even then in the spring game, I mean, moved the ball really well. Uh, and three quarters of play. 
So I don't know what we got to do, but you got to get it fixed now because you're just wearing this defense out. And even though we had big playmakers last year on our trip, you know what I love? I love when you could see the opposing defense just give up. That big offensive line just pushed a steady drive down the field and eat six, seven minutes up off the clock. And you could just watch a defense deep right last year. And this year, it's our defense that seems deflated at times because they're constantly out on the field. Well, we're going to see what the Wildcats have in store for us when they come out in the second half. We will get the ball to start the second half. But without further ado, Jackie, uh, Got some college football to talk about, man. I, I got some folks that I know are listening that I'm going to let them know just how the world changes because <laughs> let's start off in Gainesville, okay? And I'm not – listen, I've been the big – listen, you know how big of a Gator fan I am, Jackie, and you know how critical I've been of what the Gators have done in the past couple of seasons. Well, not the past couple, the past several but, Jackie, there's a new sheriff in town, Dan Mullen, and things are, are changing. And, and I'm going to warn some of my Seminole friends right now. I'm sure like the way things are headed in Gainesville more than I would in Tallahassee. Well, not only Tallahassee. Let me tell you, last year we were the bottom barrel of teams in the state of Florida. Well, you know what, baby? Not after this weekend. Because Miami just gets absolutely drilled by LSU. And then the Seminoles welcome in the Taggart era with what seemed to be probably negative 15 yards of total offense that game, besides Cam Akers' one big run. So the Gators put up 50 something. And it's a whole class of seven. Man, y'all played a high school team. You know what? After what we, how we played those high school teams in the last four years, I don't care. You ain't going to tell me nothing different, baby. The Gators are back, back on top in the state of Florida. <laughs> well, I say, I say hold the phone for just a moment because we got it, we got the juries out, okay? I, listen, I'm a fan. I love some of the offensive skill players the Gators have brought in down there. But let's watch it and see how it unfolds the next couple of weeks. So, you know, I, we'll see what year for Florida. But I'm not ready to say that just yet, Jackie, but I, I'll let you say it. Florida, Kentucky tomorrow night in the swamp. What do you expect? 32 is great, baby. Kentucky will not come down there and beat us in the swamp the way Felipe Franks threw that football. And let me tell you, from an analytical standpoint, I'm not just talking about the score. I'm talking about Felipe Franks looking the most comfortable at quarterback I've ever seen him since he's been down at Gainesville. He made some throws in the end zone on those quick slants with Jefferson caught one where the defender was just draped on top of his back, and the location of those balls was perfect. I saw Franks go from his first read, sidestep the defensive tackle, go to his second read and complete a pass down the middle. So just the way he's playing, not what he did, but how he's playing the game was very impressive. Well, I'm going to take Florida, too. I'm not so sure. I, I hear Florida fans this week talking about a big blowout and everything else. Listen, I can assure you Kentucky's going to come to play in that football game tomorrow night. I assure you Kentucky's going to come to play in that football game tomorrow night. Uh, I think the spread, if you're a Vegas insider, you know, you're talking about a 14-and-a-half, 15-point spread. Listen, I would say it's somewhere around there. I would say it's going to be, a uh, you know, a ball game that Florida – it's going to show some things, and tomorrow night's going to be the night that, that proves, you know, if what you're saying is right. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I, I was a little bit harsh on, you know, my Florida State friends a moment ago, but they've got to get some things turned around. We'll talk about them when they play another decent team uh, coming up in a few weeks. But they have Sanford this week. I expect the Seminoles to get back on track. Uh, but, Jackie, let's talk about in the SEC. My friends, you know, we've got a bunch of friends that listen to us, and some of them even sitting up here beside us. Big Georgia Bulldog fans, listen. Georgia is starting the season off with a big test tomorrow. They, they, you know, they had Austin P last week. Uh, you know, Jake Fromm. He, I'm sure he looked just as good as he did last year. But Georgia's going down there to face Will Muschamp in this resurgent South Carolina game. Listen, Georgia is starting the season off with a big test tomorrow. They, they, you know, they had Austin P last week. Uh, you know, Jake Fromm, he, I'm sure he looked just as good as he did last year. But Georgia's going down there to face Will Muschamp and this resurgent South Carolina game talk team. And they've got to go into williams Bryce in Columbia, South Carolina. Jackie, what do you think happens? You know, the only thing I can say about Georgia, I'll give them credit, man. They were the real deal last year until Tua, second 26. But, but all that aside, Kelly Cruz, don't even think about that play. It was one play on the season. But I'm going to tell you, they brought in some kids, man, constantly. Last two years, number one recruiting class. I just hope 
that they fall into that 07 Gator range where we won a national championship, then we were kind of rebuilding, and then we won another one in 0 I hope we can catch Georgia this year in that uh, in between because they're going to be good for a while, I'm afraid. Well, I agree with you. I think Georgia's good. They're loaded. They've got a lot of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Their defense is playing good, sound football. Won another one in 0 I hope we can catch Georgia this year in that uh, in between because they're going to be good for a while, I'm afraid. Well, I agree with you. I think Georgia's good. They're loaded. They've got a lot of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Their defense is playing good, sound football. But I'm going to tell you something, man, and this is this is where the world of football is, is one of those strange things. Things change from year to year. They just do. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to call it right now. My Georgia, my Georgia folks aren't going to like it, but South Carolina is going to give Georgia a ball game tomorrow in Williams-Brice. I think they've been waiting for it. I think Will Muschamp has been scheming for it. I think they want people to recognize them as a true player in the SEC East. Unfortunately, they don't win it. I think Georgia wins a close ball game. Uh, but I do think South Carolina makes it a tough game. That's a game you need to watch tomorrow. Do you remember when Will Muschamp beat Georgia in Jacksonville with about, I think we had one pass completion that game, and we yeah. ran for about 243 yards? So Muschamp knows. I mean, if anybody can do it, Muschamp can stop that potent Georgia offense. One other game to watch tomorrow. You know, I don't know that they can spring the upset, but Jimbo Fisher out in Kyle Field in College Station is going to be facing Clemson and the Tigers. That's a game to watch, too. I, I don't know that Texas A&M can pull it off, uh, but that is a game to keep your eye on tomorrow as Clemson travels to Kyle Field. A lot of, lot of time for us to talk about college football the rest of the year. Jackie, we're going to cut it short here. You've been listening to the Farm Bureau Halftime Show. Stay tuned because I'm going to give you some information about our coaches show that comes up on Monday night. American Recycling, my man Tim Hughes, helping us out with some Jaguar tickets. We're going to be giving those away later on in the season, so I want you to stay tuned to that. Also, Big Boy Sandwich Shop down there, uh, I thought they were going to send us some hot fudge sundaes here tonight, but I see they haven't shown up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but Big Boy Sandwich Shop also going to be giving away some food on our Monday night coaches show. So those are things that you need to be listening in for. Get a 30-second break. You're listening to Wildcat Football on WFBB. And we welcome you back here to Rebalt High School, the Rebalt Trojans. And the Baker County Wildcats, we've got a 6-6 to ball game, but the Wildcats of Baker County getting a defensive touchdown there in the second quarter, coming back out and trying to get things going here in the second half. We will get the ball to start the second half. The Wildcats will start, looks like, after the kickoff here, right around the 33-yard line. So let's see, Jackie, if we can get this offense untracked here to start the second half. A 6-6 to ball game as we come to you live from Rebalt High School. Well, if anybody, any coaching staff in the state of Florida is good at halftime adjustments, it's the one right here in Baker County, so let's see what they did. First down play, under center goes Alex Bowen, and the Wildcats are going to give the ball to the fullback, and Kelton Nabb, just like you call it, Jackie, Kelton Nabb is going to rumble straight ahead for a first down. They go under center, they go power football, and Kelton Nabb, and for defense, offense, let him take the extra point. I don't care. <laughs> that man can do it. He's back in there again. They go under center again. Alex Bowen takes the snap. He's going to give it to the deep back. And there goes John Green. And John Green's going to get a hit for about five yards. So they did make a change. A big adjustment at halftime for this Wildcat football team. And we go power. We've got the fullback and the running back in the backfield. And Alex Bowen, instead of being in that traditional shotgun look, he is under center in the catch now. Facing a second and five. Well, you want to talk about tradition. You ask any Wildcat fan from the last, as long as they can remember, power football is the name of the game in Baker County, and we're showing it right now. Second down and five. Again, same look. Alex Bowen under center. Gives the ball to Green. Green is going to get ahead, and he gets cut down after a gain of about three down to the 42-yard line of rebound. And Green was looking for that first down, got cut down a little bit short, and you're looking at third down and a long two. Third and two here, but been able to pick up. Three. You're looking at third down and a long two. Third and two here, but been able to pick up three and four yards on every carry here. So let's see if this offensive line can get a push. Kelton Nabb still in there and fullback, and they hand it to him again. Just underway in the second half, time ball game, six to six. Wildcats and Trojans on the road here. Wildcats, Bowen under center, takes the snap, gives to Kelton Nabb. Kelton Nabb fighting his way down to the 41, and he fights across the 40, and he's going to get the first down on sheer effort. I mean, that dude, I'm telling you right now. Uh, 
That man's got some heart. There's nothing. He's got athletic ability, but my goodness, he stopped the yard short of the first down and just kept driving and fouled over two rebound defenders there to pick up the first. He did exactly that. Cut Nab with the football goes straight ahead and gets the first down for the Cats. We are inside the 40-yard line of rebound. The Wildcats trying to drive to start the second half. Alex Bowen. Under center again, he's got Kelton and gets the first down for the Cats. We are inside the 40-yard line of rebound. The Wildcats trying to drive to start the second half. Alex Bowen, under center again, he's got Kelton now at the fullback. Two receivers, one to the left and one to the right. John Green is the running back. Here we go. Bowen, under center. First down, takes the snap, gives to Green. Green bounces it right, now cuts it back left. And he was chased down after a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. Looked like he might have a little bit of room to the left, but that rebound front seven is very fast. And we're just letting that backside defender loose back there. Got a couple uh, couple linemen pulling, and you got to know that as a running back, that there's nobody blocking that guy. So there's not a cutback lane. You think it's there, but as soon as he slows down, that backside defender is making the play. Second down nine from the rebound 39-yard line. Alex Bowen under center gives to Kelton now. Kelton now pushing the foul. He's still on his feet. He fights football. I mean, just smash mouth. Let's line up. We're going to put it to you. And that time, Kelton now with an eight-yard game. I tell you what, Kelton now, he's a linebacker. He likes to hit people. Well, right now, he's hitting people in that fullback spot. Alex Bowen fumbles the snap here on third down. They just needed a yard. He picks it up and moves ahead about a half yard, but it's going to be a fourth down. And call it one. That is the only thing I was a little bit afraid of. When you don't go under center enough throughout the season, you come out here and that exchange just isn't what it should be. And it costs you uh, maybe a first down, but fourth and a half yard here. They're going to go for it. Look for the handoff to Kelton Nab. Here you go, Nab. Straight ahead. Nab's going to get the first down maybe. Maybe. If he got to the 30, they're going to get it. Oh, they do. He stretches the ball out. They were ready for it. I think they knew Kelton Nab was coming on that play, but he gets the first down. The Cats again, another first down, 8.32 to first down. The Cats again, another first down, 8.32 to go here in the third quarter. Just underway, second half. Tie ball game, and the Cats now moving to start the second half. I think everybody in the stadium knew Kelton Nab was going to get the ball, but didn't stop him, able to pick up a crucial yard there when all you need is a half yard to pick up another Wildcat first down. Kelton Nav looks like he needs some water. First down from the 30-yard line, Alex Bowen under center. And Alex Bowen thought he had rebound jumping off sides there, steps away for just a moment. Now getting ready. Bowen takes the snap, gives it to Green, and Green is hitting the backfield. And you can see that coming. Rebound crowded the line of scrimmage, and they they decided that time they were going to force the action, and they did. They get into the backfield and knock John Green for a loss. Yeah, and I mean, you're lined up in a jumbo set. you got one wide receiver out there. Put a hat on a hat and drive your man down the field. There is no reason with John Green for a loss. Yeah, and I mean, you're lined up in a jumbo set. you got one wide receiver out there. Put a hat on a hat and drive your man down the field. There is no reason we should be getting beat up in the trenches like that. Two-yard loss. It'll be second down and 12. Back to the 32-yard line. Wildcats need to continue to sustain this drive. They've taken five minutes off the clock here to start the third quarter, still with the football. They hand the ball to the deep back. That's going to be Green again, and Green's going to be stood up near the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one on the play. And it's going to be third and 11 for the Cats. They had a full house backfield that time with three backs, almost a little bit of a wishbone look. Yeah, and that's how, I mean, uh, when you're running that formation, it's all about with power, Mike. You know what I mean? Who wants to more in that situation? 11 guys on offense, 11 guys on defense. And right now, Rebound acting like they wanted a little more with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Seven minutes to go. And the ball is in and out of his hands down the right sideline, and Connor was open by a step, Jackie. Yeah, and they just missed it a little bit there. Golly, they just cannot get on the same page tonight, Mike. That time, like you said, kind of had about two yards on his man. Looked like a well-thrown ball there and just couldn't connect on it. Fourth down, the Wildcat offense is still on the field. Alex Bowen and Kyneth kind of almost connected that time. Would have been a huge pass down the right sideline. It looked like Kyneth kind of was using one hand to shield himself from the defender. 
and looked up and the ball was on him and couldn't quite get both hands on the ball. Had he gotten both hands on the ball, Jackie, he pulls that one in. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, Coach Jacob said, I was like, we act like we were going to go for it. Now we're second-guessing our decision here. Fourth down play. Well, we did this against Ed White a lot, and we pinned them deep, and we were able to sustain. And we're going to take the delay again to return. Hopefully this defense can come out, get a big stop, and this offense can get the ball back with maybe a little shorter field. Again, Reball sends two return men back deep to return the punt. Alex Bowen stands at our 45-yard line. Uh, we need a good snap here. Bowen picks it up off the ground. Low snap. A nice kick, though, and a fair catch call for inside the 10-yard line. He called for a fair catch at the 5-yard line. So Reball gives us a break there with a fair catch inside the 10 at the 5. It'll be first and 10 for Reball from there when we come back. Well, no, go ahead. We'll keep it here for just a moment. Yeah, go ahead, Jackie. I, I'm in the midst of this a halftime, Mike. You know, we wanted to give a big shout-out to – you talk about John Meadows over there, Glenn yeah. Baptist, but Pastor Chaz Rowland, and the Glenn Baptist youth, they're at Rock the Universe in Orlando tonight. They're all listening in, cheering hard for the Baker County Wildcats. Trey Nab down there, got them all tuned up and listening in, and he said, all across the country, Chaz Rowland, good fan, good guy. We like him being part of this thing, and John Meadows, those guys at Glenn Baptist, so Wish all those guys well. What did you say? Rock the Universe? Rock the Universe in Orlando. Orlando. Oh, you group down there. Well, I mean, sometimes hopefully I they're crowded around the radio listening to Wildcat football. Uh, he's, a, he's a better man than me. I can't handle my own two kids sometimes. So to take a group of them down there, good for Cray now. <laughs> Is he there? Yeah, he's down there. He's... First down and 10 for Reball from the five-yard line. Six and a half minutes to go to third quarter. High snap. They hand the ball to the running back right side, and he's going to break out and give them a little bit of breathing room across the 10-yard line, an eight-yard gain for Reball on first down. And that time, Reball, I mean, what we used to see and the whole three used to see on our side of the ball, Reball's doing that to this defense right now. Had them pinned deep and just opened up a gate, an eight-yard gain for Reball on first down. And that time, Reball, I mean, what we used to see and the whole three used to see on our side of the ball, Reball's doing that to this defense right now. Had them pinned deep and just opened up a gaping hole in that defensive front to let him scamper for eight yards. Thought he was going to snap over the quarterback's head, though. We need, a turnover here would be huge. Five turnovers in the first half, two for the Wildcats and three for Reball. Two interceptions by Reball and a fumble. So five turnovers in that first half. Six minutes to go here, third quarter. They snap it back to the quarterback. They're going to run it right side this time, and the Wildcat defense all over them in the backfield. So they gained eight on first down. Now they're going to lose four on second down. It'll bring third down and six up for the Trojans. Who do you think was in on that tackle? I'm guessing Kelton there. Uh, well, you would guess right. Oh, my goodness. I gave you three guesses. You only need one. And, folks, it's, it's not that Jackie and I are just Kelton Nab fans. I mean, the guy is all over the field. Yeah, great football player. Third down play coming up. Call it third down and six from inside the 10-yard line for Reball. Five and a half minutes to go third quarter. We've got a close one, six to six ball game. You can't get any closer than that. Quarterback Jackson in the shotgun. He splits two receivers to the right and one to the left. Wildcats show blitz, third down play. Jackson rolling right. He's going to try to throw it, and he's going to throw it underneath. It's almost intercepted again as he was hit as he threw, and they're going to have to punt it now. I'm telling you, if you can get pressure on this guy, he's a great athlete. Don't get me wrong, but he seems so far to panic under that pressure. So if we can keep it on him, he, an ill-advised throw there again as he was in the grasp of, I believe that was Chase Hancock in there. Had his big paw on him, and the rebound quarterback just flails it in the air. But we're going to make him punt here and hopefully start off a good field position. Well, this is why the Wildcats made the right decision a moment ago to punt the football away. You punt the football away to return this punt. Great field position upcoming for the Cats. The rebound punter's in the back of the end zone. It's a high snap. Almost blocking, and they hit him, and you're going to get a play. Hit the punter. On the play, and I don't know if they're going to get a first down out of that or not, Jackie. We're going to have to see. But the Wildcats trying to block the punt at the back of the end zone, and we roughed the punter. We would have had the ball first down and 10 at our at Reebok's 37-yard line after the punt, but we hit the and, punter in the backfield. And high school football, a block punt is almost the worst thing that can happen because now they're going to try to do it 
every time. <sighs> and that time, you know, you got to know when to lay off. Golly. Personal foul. So they get a personal foul. It's not just running into the punter. It's a personal foul, and they're going to take it all the way from – my goodness, Jackie, why are they taking it way out there? 5, 10, 15, 20, well, all the way out to the 18-yard line. First down rebound. Golly, man, that's a, that's a heartbreaker. You, your defense stands, does the right thing, and they give it up on the penalty again. Jackson in the shotgun from the 18-yard line. They're going to run it first down play, running right side. The Cats stop this play right at the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> Big Jock was Elliott again in there from that defensive tackle spot, man. I tell you what, that dude, he is playing some ball this year. With a big hole to fill in the middle of that defensive line, losing Tay Reed and Brian West down there. I'm talking about maybe the the best tandem of defensive tackles Baker County's ever seen on the field at one time. And Jock was Elliott with big shoes to fill has done a great job this season. Jackie, the power of TuneIn makes it possible for ple- people to listen in to us all over the place. If you've got a chance and you're not in the McClenney or Glen St. Mary area to hear the game on the radio, put it on TuneIn. Search WFDB. Second down play, second down and 10. Flag down on the play. They're going to swing it out left oh. side, and the pass is incomplete, but we got to check this flag. It could be defense. DB. Second down play, second down and 10. Flag down on the play. They're going to swing it out left oh. side. And the pass is incomplete, but we got to check this flag. It could be defense. Could be defense on the offsides, or it could be that they lined up illegally. Let's check it and see. They had a guy in motion, so they've done that in the first half. I told you he turned it up too soon, but let's see what they call yeah, it. That's what they call a legal shift there on the offsides. Going to decline it. Yep. <clears throat> and that that time, I where'd our roster go? Since my goodness, I set you up on that, Jackie, with the tune-in conversation to tell you this. I heard from John Meadows, we've got people listening in on TuneIn all over the place. We've even got somebody listening in from Germany. Oh, wow. They let John know they're listening in from over there. So the power of the Internet gets us worldwide. I like it. Third down play, third down and 10. Jackson in the shotgun for rebound. Wildcats need to get the defense off the field again here. Third down play, Jack there. So the power of the Internet gets us worldwide. I like it. Third down play. Third down and 10. Jackson in the shotgun for rebound. Wildcats need to get the defense off the field again here. Third down play, Jackson. One receiver, two receivers to the right, three receivers to the left. Now a man comes in motion. Jackson takes the snap. He looks down the field. He's going to try to throw it. Now he's going to run. He's going to get ahead for a couple of yards, but the defense collapses and gets to Jackson before he can get the first down, and it will be... Punt time again for Reball. Let's don't rough him. No, nah, don't rough him, but I tell you what, Jackson better be careful because that two shots he took, that's what I was going to mention a minute ago. Tyler Cruz, on two plays ago, absolutely leveled Jackson after he released the ball. So that uh, that defense getting after the quarterback a little bit, and uh, he may need some icy hot in the morning. Jackson now off the field. They send the punter in, the Wildcats, and after he released the ball, so that uh, that defense getting after the quarterback a little bit, and uh, he may need some icy hot in the morning. Jackson now off the field. They send the punter in. The Wildcats still look to get decent field position here. Wildcats try again to rush the punter, and the punt's going to come down right near midfield and take a rebound roll down to the Wildcat 45. So we will have it first down and 10 from our own 45 when we come back. Let's take a 30-second timeout. And we'll be back. You're listening to Wildcat Football on 97.5 WFBB. Baker High Football is being brought to you by Morrell's Furniture and Mattresses. Hey folks, Paul with Morrell's here. We have a 19,000 square foot furniture showroom, our mattress gallery, outdoor and patio department, and our huge clearance center. Morrell's Highway 90 west of I-75 on Jeff Davis Lane. Just follow the signs. Online at morrells.com. M-O-R-R-E-L-L-S dot com. Running back and gets a gain of one yard. We're out to the 46 yard line. Jackie, this is going to be one of those fourth quarter games. 317 to go third quarter here. The clock is running down. Both teams deadlocked at six points, a defensive touchdown for the Cats, an offensive touchdown for Rebalt. Neither team converted the extra point, and that's where we stand, 6-6, six to six, as we get close to the end of the third quarter. 
Second down play for the Cats now. Alex Bowen under center. He's got Kelton Nabb in the backfield with him, and Alex Bowen's going to run one out to the right side. He's going to run it himself. He's across the 45 and gets near the field, and he gets tackled way out of bounds, and they're going to get a flag on him. It's going to be 15 yards. Add that to the end of the play as he was almost near the bench when he got tackled that time. And five yards on the carry and add 15 to it. The Wildcats are going to have the ball inside rebound territory with a first down around the 40-yard line. And that's 15 extra yards, and maybe some of the best field position we've had all night on offense. Well, a good job by Alex Bowen. It looked like he was going to get tackled in the backfield on that play. He was able to use his legs and get outside and get near the sideline. And when he did, you know, he's going out of bounds. The linebacker just never pulled up and almost ran him into that bench on the rebound sideline. Here we go, on the Baker County sideline. Sorry, 2.44 to go, third quarter. Cats now, first and ten, another chance, deep inside rebound territory. Hand off, straight middle. Here we go, outside run. This time it's Scooby Graham, and he's going to get nine yards off the right end. A good, good movement and vision that time by Scooby Graham. It'll be second and one. That's why I'm so impressed with Scooby Graham. The only being sophomore just has the vision of running back that he has. He sees the holes before they open up. And a great, great job of running the football tonight. And a good job by that offensive line that time to really open up a hole and drive that defense back. Second down and one that he has. He sees the holes before they open up. And a great, great job of running the football tonight. And a good job by that offensive line that time to really open up a hole and drive that defense back. Second down and one from the 31-yard line of Reball. Alex Bowen again with Kelton Nabb. And a running back in the backfield. I think that's Graham. Here we go. Second down and one. Graham's going to get the carry. He goes straight ahead. And Graham all the way down to the 25-yard line. And it's going to be another first down for the Cats. And this is what I'm talking about, Mike. At this point, right now, keep the tempo going. This offensive line is just imposing their will on the defense right now. And you can see the defense. Now it's their hands on their hips just getting roared down by that big offensive front of the Wildcats. First down play now, and and I I used that word tempo earlier. The Wildcats kind of slowing it down here, looking to the sideline. I'd like to see that tempo continue. First down play coming up. A good opportunity for the Cats. First down play now, and and I I used that word tempo earlier. The Wildcats kind of slowing it down here, looking to the sideline. I'd like to see that tempo continue. First down play coming up. A good opportunity for the Cats. We've had some opportunities inside their territory, but now we're getting near the red zone. Alex Bowen under center. Alex takes the snap. Going to give the ball to the deep back. He's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage and maybe gets ahead for a yard or so down to the 24. It'll be second and long coming up. And again on that play, you know, the last two plays, that offensive line just kind of put a hat on a hat. That one again, you see some guys up still getting to the second level, which I'm fine with, but you got to block the first level first, you know, whether it be chip your man or whatever you got to do. That time, Scooby Graham met at the line of scrimmage and fights for about one yard there. After this play, we're going to be under a minute to go in the third quarter. Tie ball game, 6-6 six to six here from Reball High School. Flag is in the third quarter. Tie ball game, 6-6 six to six here from Reball High School. Alex Bowen under center, and I heard a whistle over on the far sideline. A flag is, no, it's not a flag. Somebody just blew the play bit. Oh, right now. I'm not sure what they stopped it for, but now they start it again. And Wildcats will get back to the line. The far On the far sideline, he blew the whistle, but not sure why. Amateur hour. <laughs> Second down and nine. Under a minute here to go in the third quarter. Bowen under center. Looks to take the snap. He does. He's going to give the ball to the deep back. That's Graham again. Graham running hard inside the 10-yard line. A first down for the Cats as he came barreling through the line of scrimmage. And you know what I saw after that play, Mike? Three rebound Trojans down on the ground just getting demolished by that offensive front. That's a great job by those guys. I know I'm hard on them, Mike, but that's what I love them and I know what they can do. Cats knocking on the door. Tie ball game, 6-6. Six to six. Bowen. Under center, takes the snap. He's going to give it to the deep back again, and he's going to be hit and stopped around the eight-yard line. It'll be second down, but not until we go to the fourth quarter. That's going to do it for the third quarter of play here from Reball High School. We're going to go to the fourth quarter deadlock, but the Cats are knocking on the door. We'll take a one-minute timeout. You're listening to Wildcat Football 
right here on 97.5 WFBB. Well, it turned out to be a beautiful night for football here from Reball High School. We had a breeze blowing earlier, Jackie. Just an outstanding night here. It's not too hot. It's certainly not too cold. It's just right. And both teams getting ready to start the fourth quarter here. A 6-6 six to six ball game from Reball High School to Wildcats sitting on the eight-yard line. A rebound here facing a second down and goal. Now it's just time to man up, Mike. You know, who's gonna be who's gonna be the bigger man right here? Now in the eight yard line in the trenches. This is this is to a down and goal. Now it's just time to man up, Mike. You know, who's gonna be who's gonna be the bigger man right here? Now in the eight yard line in the trenches. This is this is just uh big man football right here. Second down goal. The Cats have Kelton Nab and Scooby Graham in the backfield. Alex Bowen under center. Takes the ball. Gives to Graham. Graham runs left side. He's got a hold down to the two-yard line. And the Cats are stopped right there at the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Again, a great run by Scooby Graham. He saw the hole up to the outside. He kind of bounced it out there. The uh, tacker did a good job of sending his block on the end. Scooby Graham. Picked up big six yards there, and now third and goal from the two-yard line with 11.30 left in the fourth quarter in the five-ball game, 66. I call it the two. It's actually closer to the one-yard line. You like Kelton Nab here, Jackie? I don't know why you would do anything different, Mike. Third down goal. Bowen, under center. Mike. Third down goal. Bowen, under center. Takes the ball. Gives to Graham. Graham's going to be hit and pushed back. He's going to be pushed back near the five-yard line. They did not get in on that play. He fumbled the ball. Uh, he oh, sure did. He fumbled the ball. Rebound's got it. You got to blow that dead. You got to blow that play dead, Mike. He stood us up on the two-yard line, drove us all the way to the hash mark from the middle of the field, and you're not going to blow the whistle to call that play dead. Come on, man. That's terrible. The Wildcats appeared to be going into the end zone just a moment ago. Gray on either that right tackle. He was stood up, like Jackie said, around the two-yard line, pushed back near the five. And I never saw the ball come out. I guess they took it away from him at the end of the play after he had eight defenders on him. You got to blow the play dead. They can't stall out for three seconds, giving them a chance to just sit there and rip it out. And now Rebalt takes over, first and ten from the five. They give the ball running left end, and the running back's going to get around the corner, and he's going to get out across the ten, close to the 20-yard line here. A nice gain on first down for Rebalt as they're going to move the chains. Sorry, they won't move the chains. It'll be second down and one, a nine-yard gain. They come out. Again, on that sweet play, uh, we got the right call on. I, I don't know if it's the outside linebacker or the safety running up. They're, they're flying in there and just not making the tackle. I mean, that's a good three-yard loss if they'll wrap up and make the tackle. I'm not sure who it is knifing in there like that. Second down now. Second down, call it two. Jackson takes the snap on a jet sweep coming left side, and the running back is going to get all the way out across the 20 to the 25. And finally, he's set out of bounds over here on the Wildcat sideline. But not before a big first down for Rebalt, as they've got a little momentum now after the turnover. And now Rebalt, with two good runs here, has brought the ball out to about the 27-yard line. Looked like number 54, Wesley Staggs, talking to the official there like he might have gotten held on the play. The official just turned and walked the other way. First down and 10, Rebalt. They're now close to the 30-yard line after a couple of big runs. Jackson in the shotgun, sends a man in motion here. It's going to be a first down play. They run it left side, a little option play, a toss out there, and the Cats have it read pretty well, but the running back's going to get back to the line of scrimmage before being brought down. It'll be second down and 10, no gain on the play. Great play by that defense that time. They read it, but again, a couple missed tackles in the backfield. The running back able to escape a five-yard loss and turn it into a, about a half-a-yard loss on that play, but... Good job by the Wildcat defense. Uh, <laughs> stay in there and just keep grinding, man. I mean, that's all you can do at this point. Don't give up the big one. <laughs> Option play, and I stick it in my pocket and don't use it again. That was almost disastrous. Uh, I know that. Second down and 10 now from the 27-yard line. Jackson in the shotgun. He's got two receivers right and one to the left. No backs in the backfield. Now he sends a man in motion. Pass to the left side. He's going to be hit over there as he makes the catch, but he spins away from one tackle and gets upfield for a three-yard gain. 
it'll be third down. Got to make tackles. Got to make tackles again. Had him for a minimal game there, and he's able to escape. And still only a minimal game. Very short but game. Very short. I don't like missed tackles. Like <laughs> that, you know, in a second, one of those is going to get missed, and it's going to maybe a house call. So just hang on to it. That's all I'm asking you to do. Hang on to it and let the rest of that Wildcat defense come put a lick on him. Third down play coming up now. Third down and call it eight. Rebound needs to get out across the 30-yard line for a press unit to do. Hang on to it and let the rest of that Wildcat defense come put a lick on him. Third down play coming up now. Third down and call it eight. Rebound needs to get out across the 30-yard line for a first down. Jackson in the shotgun. Good blocking up front. He's got time to throw. He throws across the middle and finds the big guy. And a catch made and a first down for Reball. Oh, my goodness. He had all day to throw, Jackie. No pressure on the quarterback that time. Yeah, that's what we had talked about. you got to get pressure on him. He, he makes terrible decisions under pressure. And that time, that defensive line, and listen, hey, they're gas, man. I, I get it. You know what I mean? But. On a big third and long, you just got to give it everything you got for one more play. And that time, unable to come up with a big play, and Reebok picks up the first down. Defense has been on the field all night for this Cat football team. First down and 10 now, Reebok from the 40. And that time, unable to come up with a big play, and Reebok picks up the first down. Defense has been on the field all night for this Cat football team. First down and 10 now, Reebok. From the 40-yard line, Jackson takes the ball, gives it straight up the middle. A good run for the running back out near the 45-yard line. A gain of almost five on first down. Rebound. After the turnover, Jackie, they got it back inside the 10-yard line of the Wildcats. They're trying to make a statement drive here. The Cats are going to need to stand up and make one big stop. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, but I'm going to tell you, man, you just look at the guys that are out there. Scooby Graham's out there. Kelton Nath playing both ways. Tyler Burks is out there this time. I mean, you just got a lot of guys, Chris Smith, that play both ways, man, and they are, they're just gassed at this point, but you got to make a big play. Second down play coming up. Second down and five from the 45-yard line. Jackson sends a man in motion, takes the snap, gives to the running back, and he's free. The man in motion, takes the snap, gives to the running back, and he's free on the backfield. A huge play right there on the Wildcat front. Big Tyler Burkson, he ain't fired. He ain't fired. He gets up to try to get him pumped up right there. Tyler Burkson came blasting through that defensive front and drove the running back all the way back to the 35-yard line. A loss of almost 10 yards on the play, Jackie. My goodness. Golly, and that's a guy that plays every snap on offense, Mike Cruz. Another guy that's just giving it everything he's got for this Wildcat football team. Yeah, he took over on that play for sure. Third down and long now. Jackson facing a third and 14. Jackson and the Reebok Trojans need to get across midfield. Jackson, deep drop. He's under pressure again. Tyler Burks are chasing him out of there, and he's going to be tackled well short of the first down. Again, Tyler Burks with some great pressure. Oh, no. oh, the flag comes and the flag looks like it's going to be going against Baker County here. The Reebok Trojans are urging their fans to stand up and cheer here. Oh, my goodness. After the play, dead ball, you're going to get a personal foul against Baker wow. County. <laughs> And what is that? What is that? I didn't see it. I mean, there was nothing there that I could see, Mike. I, nobody comes in on a late hit. I'm not happy about it. My goodness, the defense, another huge stop and bailed out by a daggum penalty. Well, we stopped them short. We stopped them short on the play. They were short by 10 yards. And after the play, they're going to call a personal foul against the Wildcats, and that's going to move the ball into Baker County territory after the penalty. And I'm not sure Coach Rogers got the explanation he needed. He's still going out there to talk to the officials about the play. The flag came from the far sideline right in front of the rebound bench. And he's asking for the explanation now. He's going to get an explanation. Let's see if he likes the rest. Apparently, it wasn't much of a... 
foul because the <laughs> coach is livid. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't blame him. I do not blame him. You know, there was nothing malicious for sure, Mike. It wasn't a late hit. No, it wasn't a personal foul. Right. Push, you know what I mean? Right. Those are two different things. My goodness. I can push you right here, but that's not really a personal foul. Here we go. First down and 10. Rebound's got the ball now inside Wildcat territory. Jackson gives it running left side to the running back, and a flag comes down, and this is going to be a makeup call. Jack, I can tell you right now. Ain't no doubt about it. Yeah, it's going to be a makeup call, Kelly. I tell you, they're going to call Horton on the corner over there to make up for that call they just had. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for a fourth and 12. Now you're going to give up a daggum second and 10, second and 15. Well, they'll get first down over on this play, but it'll be first and 20 instead of first and 10. And that, you know, I'll take the holding call, but you know, you, you, you just took the team off the field. You took their offense off the field a moment ago. And the 15-yard bails them out. We'll go back and look at the film with the coaches, and we'll see if that was a foul or not. But, Jackie, I didn't see anything. Yeah, hey, that's that. And the 15-yard bails them out. We'll go back and look at the film with the coaches, and we'll see if that was a foul or not. But, Jackie, I didn't see anything. Yeah, hey, that's, that's pathetic is what that is. Well, let's fast forward to where we're at now. First down at 20, 6.08 to go in the football game, a 6-6 to tie from Reebok High School. Both teams desperately wanting to get another score and get this win on Friday night. Here we go. Quarterback sends a man in motion. Jackson takes the snap. He's going to look to throw the football. He throws one across the middle. It's going to be incomplete. He didn't have anything to do with it. He just threw that one away. He knew he was going to be under pressure and sacked. It'll be third down and very long. I'm sorry, second down and very long for Reebok now, second down and 20. Second and 20, and Tyler Burns is finally coming off the field, man. Golly, that dude made two huge plays only to get a terrible, terrible call. But, hey, it is what it is. Terrible call. But, hey, it is what it is. We got to do it, man. Well, now, now you got to make a play. You know, you're under six right. minutes to go in the football game. You got a 6 6 tie. They're on the field. You got to get them off the field one more time. Quarterback Jackson. In the shotgun, takes the snap, gives to the running back, coming to the right side. He's going to be hit in the backfield. Holy hell, he reverses field. And a flag comes down finally. We're calling for the holding call. They're running back and down the sideline, deep inside Wildcat territory. I mean, this one's going to come back. He absolutely is swinging Robert Baker like a rag doll by the jersey over here. And how it took that long to get called, I have no idea. Holding against Reball, it's going to come back the other way. The home crowd won't like it, Jackie, but I'm going to tell you something. Anytime you see a running back reverse a field like that, you know there's a holding call behind it coming out, and it did. It took the referee a moment to throw it, but he, but he did throw it. Yeah, they, I don't know. It, they back to the call. It'll be second down and about 30. Rebolt has moved all the way back to their 32-yard line. Let's see where is this at. They've got to get inside the Wildcat 37 for a first down. So just add that up real quick. 18 plus 18 plus 13, that's 31. So they've got a second second down and 31. And you got to be impressed I added that that quick, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, that was good. I was, I was on my calculator. <laughs> Second down play for Reball, way back at their own 32-yard line. And now, oh, <clears throat> another flag on the far sideline. He, he's trying to make up for it. He's trying to make up for the terrible call on third down earlier. Yeah, well, they ended the play with a personal foul. Well, two calls later, now you're going to get a side terrible call on third down earlier. Yeah, well, they extended the play with the personal foul. Well, two calls later, now you're going to get a sideline warning against the That's the third. Sideline warning against Rebolt. And they're deciding whether they're going to mark it off or not. After three, you're supposed to get a five-yard penalty, and they do. So five-yard penalty, they're going to move it all the way back. No, it's 15-yard penalty on the sideline warning. So now, Jackie, it went from being a 
It went from being a second down and 31 to almost being comical now. It's second down and 46 yards to go. The rebound. Second down and 46 yards to go. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a second down and 46. Now it's second down and 46 yards to go. The rebound. Second down and 46 yards to go. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a second down and 46. Um, uh, nah. <laughs> no, I have not. But hey, I'll take it. Six six ball game with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter here. Man, I'd love something, anything. Big stop right here, turnover. Second down play, Jackson in the shotgun. Second down and forty six. Takes the snap, looks to throw. He's gets a receiver over there, catches May, but he's gonna be tackled well, well short of the first down. Only a gain of about five on the play, so it'll be third down and about forty two to go. And if the Wildcats can get off the field here, let's not have any dumb penalties or anything else. We'll get the ball back with enough time for one final drive. Both teams here in a deadlock 6-6 ball game. Neither team has scored in the second half. Four and a half, have any dumb penalties or anything else. We'll get the ball back with enough time for one final drive. Both teams here in a deadlock 6-6 ball game. Neither team has scored in the second half. Four and a half minutes to go. While we've been talking, Jackie, that clock has just steadily been ticking uh-huh. down. And the game is running short. Wildcats can get off the field here. We'll have a chance with the offense with the ball one more time. Jackson, the quarterback, stands back there. Third down. They need about 42. Same jump ball here to Norman out there. Well, it's been their go-to in a situation like this. Jackson takes the snap, looks to throw the football. He's going to be hit pressured. He's going to be hit from behind. And he's going to be sacked. Will Kynes got back there and threw him down on the ground. And Will Kynes gets the sack for the Wildcats. And that's going to take three ball and put him in a punting situation back inside the 20 yard line. He was trying to stick the ball through in there like J.J. Watt. Mike, and I was trying to play the ball. Three and a half minutes to go in this football game. The Wildcats and the Reball Trojans deadlocked at six as we approach the end of this football game. And. Jackie, as it stands right now, Rebalt just continues to shoot themselves in the foot. A five-yard penalty here before the front. So they're almost back where they put the ball from the Wildcats a moment ago. After all that, they're all the way back to the 12-yard line. So the punter is now standing in the end zone. So the Wildcats stand to get good field position here. Three and a half to go. The punt's high. It's over his head. And they go out of the end zone. And that's going to be a safety. anything on offense spectacular all night. So let's just put together a little drive here, see if we can't milk as much of this stock as possible. And, man, I've never seen I've never seen anything like that what I just saw. But that can only be attributed to one thing. The special teams coordinator, John. <laughs> they were so worried about that second pump ball. He snaps it over. Oh. We get the safety. And now we're going to get the ball back with great field position. Great play calling by Emily. Emily, absolutely. Eight to six. <laughs> Eight to six ball game. The Cats are going to get the run one back here. They're going to have to kick it off from their 20 yard line. That's how it works after a safety. So, a safety, they'll come out. They get the option to either punt it away or, or place kick it from the 20. They choose to put it on the tee. So, we'll see how deep their 20 yard line. That's how it works after a safety. So, a safety. They'll come out, they get the option to either punt it away or, or place kick it from the 20. They choose to put it on the tee, so we'll see how deep he's able to kick it. He kicks it high and short. The Cats are going to fair catch it. I don't understand why we're fair catching it, but he did, and we'll get it right at midfield. So the Cats will get it right at midfield, and we'll have it first and 10 with a chance with three and a half minutes left to miss this clock. My goodness, I, you know, I don't even know what to say, Mike. I'm stunned. Two plays tonight, one right before uh, halftime, 
that I think, you know, we're talking about what are we doing in the second half. We come up with a huge defensive touchdown, and now with three and a half minutes left, I'm thinking, can we sustain a drive to go down and four points? And we get a safety. Snap it over the front of the head. <laughs> so I was, I was just about to start talking about the potential for overtime. And then that happened. They snapped it over his head. We get the safety. It's an eight to six. And we get a safety. Snap it over the front of the head. <laughs> so I was, I was just about to start talking about the potential for overtime. And then that happened. They snapped it over his head. We get the safety. It's an eight to six lead for the Cats now with three and a half minutes to go. The Cats will go under center here, and we're going to delay a game before the play even starts. Ow. I don't, Ow. I don't know. Oh, it's a 12 man. They got 12 men on the field again. It's Ow. a Cats rebound. <laughs> the flag came from the back, Joe, so I just assumed it was delay a game. But it was 12 men on the field for rebound, and so it's five against them. So it's first and five now for the Cats. 12 men on the field in a situation like this. You can tell I didn't call games for the last two weeks. I'm rusty. I call the extra point good. I call that an offside or delay a game. Here we go. Handoff. John Green running right side. John Green's got a hole. There he goes, 35 30. John Green's got a hole. There he goes, 35 30. John Green down the sideline inside the 30 yard line and a first down for the cap. And again on that side, the offensive line, man. Three rebound Trojans laying on the ground after that play, and they're just wore down as well. And so John Green just needs a little creep when you commit to the run like that. And all 11 guys in the box, one missed tackle, and John Green is off to the races with a big game. Now first down for the Cats, first down. Cats inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Clock's running. The clock has not been our friend all night long, and now it is. About to be under three minutes to go in the game. Rebound can't do anything for right now. First down play, Alex Bowen takes the ball and gives to Green, and Green's going to be blown up in the back there, but he gets away from him. Get out of here. He gets inside the 30 and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Try to give him a step off. Time out on the field. Let's take a break here. 2.40 to go in the football game. 8-6 to six for Wildcats lead. Let's take a one-minute timeout. You're listening to Wildcat football on 97.5 WFBB. And the Reebok Trojans, the Wildcats on the road, trying desperately to get a win here. Kelton Nab on second down takes the handoff and rumbles down inside the 25-yard line, down to the 23. So the Wildcats now with the clock running are facing a third down and four, and this play will be under two minutes before we have to snap it. So if the Cats can get another first down, Jackie, the ball game would effectively be over, but that's a big if. Third down. Alex Bowen takes the snap, gives the ball, running right side is Graham, and Graham tackles behind the line of scrimmage. And Reball will call their last, what has to be their last time out. With 156 on the clock, on the line of scrimmage. Oh. That's gonna be the last. And Reball will call their last, what has to be their last time out, with 156 on the clock. And the Wildcats now facing fourth down, Jackie will have to punt it and hopefully pin them inside the five. Yeah, that time the, the use of Scooby Graham, as good as his vision is, every now and then they get a little antsy and want to bounce that thing outside, thinking they can outrun everybody. And this time, not able to avoid that uh, the left end there for that rebound defensive line. So, tackle for about a half yard long, fourth down and five. Cats up eight to six with a minute 58 left. Golly, no. Uh, the heart attack, Cats, baby. Hold on to your hats, everybody, because we've still got 158 of football to go here now. Granted, I think rebound's out of timeout. So they're not going to be able to work with much, but they are going to get the football back. So Alex Bowman is going to punt it to them from our. Yeah, I think we're going for. It. Punt it to them from our. Yeah, I think we're going for. It. Oh, yeah, that's that's crazy. We have to punt this and try to make it a longer field, wouldn't you think? Unless we're going to try to draw them off sides, Jackie. That's all I can think. I'm not sure if uh, if drawing them off sides would give us a first down or not, but we're definitely be close. We're going to line up like we're going for it. Coach Rogers standing right by the official and calls timeout. He don't like it. He don't like it. Well, I think he was just going to see what they were what they were going to show there, and then he's going to come back and let us know. So, 
And don't forget to stick around for our beauty parlor and boutique post-game show just for a few minutes following the game here tonight. And then Jackie and I will be out of here to hopefully be able to watch some college football this weekend. Jackie, I'm guessing that you won't see any. Oh, you crazy, man. I, I mean, got, you I told me you're, going, you're taking the kids to Disney World this weekend. How, are you, how in the world are you going to get to watch college football? <laughs> now at Mickey's house. <laughs> so the kids are going to be riding rides, and you're going to be sitting on the bench watching football. Yeah, me and Mickey. <laughs> Here in the Gators all. Fourth down play. Alex Bowen brings the team back out to the line of scrimmage. He snaps the football. Gives it to the right side, and we're going to be cut down five yards in the backfield. I don't understand why we didn't punt, Jackie. Uh, you know, I, here's what I thought. I thought, why not throw it? You know, I mean, maybe try to pick up the first down. If it gets intercepted, you make the tackle inside the 10, good and good as a punt. I, I'm not sure there. I mean, I mean, if you don't punt the football right there, you're basically giving them – the football at the 30-yard line. Yeah. And when you punt it there, you got a chance to down it inside the 10. That's the worst, a touchback. Yeah. I, I'm not sure, Mike. Uh, again, that'll be a Monday night question for Coach Rogers. Yeah, we'll, we'll fast forward. All right, 29-yard line, rebound with the football. First down and 10, an 8-6 to six ball coming in motion. Quarterback, oh, going to give the ball off, and they're going to be tackled in the backfield. And they had some confusion on the play, but Tyler Burson is back there, and he just wore out the quarterback. I mean, my goodness, Tyler Burson all over the field tonight. And then after that play, Reebok not really hustling to the line. They are now, but a minute 30 left in this fourth quarter. Wildcats up 8-6. to six. Reebok's got a score. No timeouts left to stop the clock. Second down play coming up. Jackson going to take the football, throw it deep down the left sideline. It's going to be caught over there, and it is going to be incomplete out of bounds. He caught it. The referee rules that he caught it out of bounds. It'll be third down, but the clock stops now with 118 to go in the game. Golly, I, man, I cannot. My heart can't take this. I'm going to have to go by. You can make it by big boys tonight before 10. <laughs> They're doing dollar oh, wildcat cones what? every game day. I don't know. Tell me how much time. Nine thirty. I can't make it. I can't make it. Tell them to hold the doors open until ten thirty. <laughs> there they were waiting on us at the line, the Baker County line, when we got back. Third down. Here we go. Third down and fourteen. Jackson in the shotgun takes the snap. Throws one deep down the left side. It's going to be. It should have been intercepted. It went in and out of the hands of our guy number 12, Cameron Crawford. If he catches it, ball game over, but he doesn't, so it's fourth down, and they've got a chance now for one more play. That was one of those. I, I think he just overthought it. That ball hung so long in the air. He just kind of watched it and watched it, and then <laughs> fourth down and 13 here, a minute and 11 left. Wildcats up 8-6. to six. Got to come up with a big stop here. This is, this is one of the craziest games that we've called in a long time. Eight to six, eleven left. Wildcats up eight to six. Got to come up with a big stop here. This, this is a Mike. This is one of the craziest games that we've called in a long time. Eight to six, Wildcats lead. Fourth down play. Jackson a rebound in the shotgun. He takes the snap. No pressure. He throws across the middle. It's going to be caught, and they've got a first down, and he's going to be near midfield. A catch and run for the rebound wide receiver, and that was number five on the play. Number five is Chris Johnson, and they get a first down out to the 48-yard line. Golly, just no pressure that time on the quarterback, able to sit back there, find the man in the middle of that zone. Minute four left, clock ticking. Now the clock's going to tick under a minute to go. First down play. Jackson going to swing one out to the left side. A catch is made, and he's going to be caught and thrown out of bounds on the far sideline. And the clock stops with 51 to go. And I'll tell you what he was saying. Go. First down play. Jackson going to swing one out to the left side. A catch is made, and he's going to be caught and thrown out of bounds on the far sideline. And the clock stops with 51 to go. And I'll tell you what he was trying to do there. I'm going to play. We run in that state championship. He pitched it out there on the wide receiver screen, and for a second, looked like that wide receiver was going to try to throw it down the field. He was looking, but that was a great play over there by Jacob Williams to get in there, make him pull it down, and tackle him out of bounds. 51 seconds left on the clock. Wildcats have 8-6. Can I have that? Reball. 
Rebound with the ball on their, their own 43 yard line here. Second down, 15. Jackson in the shotgun. 51 seconds to go. Takes the snap. Looking to throw. He's looking to throw. He's still looking. He throws one downfield. It's going to be incomplete. A nice defense to play that time by the Wildcats. To break that pass off, that was number two, Tracy White. It came up from the cornerback to left from the cornerback position. They were looking for number five again, Chris Johnson. The problem with that pass play for Jackson was he had to float it. And he floated it just too long, gave the Wildcats time to come over and knock it down. It'll be third down. Yeah, and Tracy White with a great play there. I'll tell you, Mike, we talked talk about this in the first half. He's a great defensive back, you know. He just mismatched in that first half against the taller receiver. But he came up with a big interception at the end of the first half and makes another great play there. So third and 15 with 44 seconds left. Wildcats up 8-6. to 8-6. Six. Eight to six. Bottom of the night. How big would a sack be right here? It would be huge. Jackson in the shotgun. Third down, 15. Looks to throw the football. He's under pressure this time. Has to scramble. He throws one short. It's going to be incomplete. He had to dump it off to the short man. It would not have been a first down, but he doesn't make the catch. And now it's fourth down and the last opportunity for Rebar. Uh, very last opportunity here. Here's the game right here. Fourth down. Jackson in the shotgun. Wildcats go to a prevent look. Uh, and now they get a false start as the wide receiver took off the ball. Five seconds early. They thought this was a Canadian football. They <laughs> thought he could get a running start there. He was five yards down the field. <laughs> oh, my goodness, my goodness. Oh, Tyler Burst is back in the ball game. Let's see if that big pass rush can get in there. Got to put some pressure on him here. Zane Mobley, number 81, checks out of the game. Tyler Burst at number 70, checks back in. Wildcats now is kind of a... Three man front, three guys in the middle, and everybody else is back deep. Jackson, the quarterback, fourth down and 20. Looks down the middle of the field, throws one down the middle. He's got a man that's incomplete. Cameron Crocker thought about laying him out and kind of pulled up just this season, you know, just trying to get out alive with just no offensive presence whatsoever. And again, going to escape this with an eight to six victory. My goodness, what a ball game. Hey, 13, 13, and 8. That's our offensive production for the year. And actually, this is a defensive touchdown and I had a safety. So 34 total points scored by the Cats. But guess what? Two and one record on the year. They win the ball game tonight here at Rebalt. Crazy football game. We're going to come back in the beauty parlor and boutique post game show and talk to you about it for a couple of minutes. And then, Jackie, I'm going to. Wish you well on your way to Disney World. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if I can make that job after this game. Oh, Wildcats Alex Bowen takes a knee. That'll do it. That's going to run the clock out. Wildcats victorious, 8-6 to six, on the road against Revolt. And the Trojans to 0-3 on the year. The Wildcats improved to 2-1 and one on the season. We're going to take a 30-second timeout, and we'll be back to wrap it up here. From Reball High School, you're listening to Wildcat Football on 97.5 WFBB. The Baker County High School Football Post Game Show on 97.5 FM is brought to you in part by the Beauty Parlor Salon and Boutique at the corner of US 90 and State Road 228. <laughs> and we welcome you back here, the Beauty Parlor and Boutique Post Game Show from Rebalt High School right here. The Wildcats with an 8-6 to six win on the road against the Trojans. And I tell you what, Jackie, there was lots of things to talk about in this game, but uh, offense wasn't one of them. Oh, my goodness. Wildcats struggled on offense tonight, but overall, overall, the defense did exactly what they've done the first two weeks to talk about in this game, but uh, offense wasn't one of them. Oh, my goodness. Wildcats struggled on offense tonight, but overall, overall, the defense did exactly what they've done the first two weeks and got the job done. And the Wildcats get out of here with an 8-6 to six win and prove the 2-1 and one on the year just in time for us to head back home next week to start district play. Uh, against a great Menendez team, you know, that is putting up some points. So I'm not sure that 8-13 and 13 points is going to cut it all year. I like the grit 
of this team, you know. They don't ever quit. They stay right there with it. I mean, we were deadlocked at 6-6 six to six for most of the ball game, uh, and there was no quit in them whatsoever. But, man, we have got to find something on offense tonight. There is no way. You and I know, as Florida fans, you and I know that defense is great, but you're not going to win a lot of ball games only scoring eight points. So something's got to give on the offensive side of the ball. And, uh, you know, the big, the old, the old saying we used to say down in Gainesville, Jackie, it was bend but don't break, right? Yeah. And, and this defense, they don't even bend a lot. No. I mean, the, the Reebok Trojans got one touchdown tonight and really they had one big play, you know, the big play to the big receiver down to the one yard line. And, and that one big play set up their touchdown. And without that, the Wildcat defense just dominated this football game tonight. And I, and I mean, let, let's just name some players that we saw some big plays from tonight. Tracy White with a big play. Robert Baker with a big play. Chase Hancock, some big plays. Tyler Burton, some big plays coming in and playing defense on both sides of the football. Can't even leave off number 31, Kelton Nabb. What a game. And I'm telling you, some other guys that stepped up, you heard their names called tonight. Cameron Crawford knocked down some passes back there in the backfield. Um uh, some other guys, I mean, just, just an all-out outstanding defensive performance here tonight. And, you know, performance here tonight. And you just, all you can do is tip your cap to the way they play football on, de- on the defensive side of the ball tonight. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there, there was, you know, a lot of plays being made out there tonight. Some at crucial times of the game. And the defense did their job, like you said. I mean, there's yeah. not even a lot of bend in those guys. So to come out again with just one starter from last season's team and be able to, to only give up, you know, last six tonight, yeah. uh, eight last week, uh, 13, 13 the week before. So, I mean, we're just not giving up a lot of points, you know. So we're not asking a lot of this offense. You know what I mean? I, I'm not asking you to score 40. Not asking to score thirty, you know, but my goodness, we we gotta get we gotta get twenty, you know, and I think this defense I think Coach Rogers and Coach Candidate will have this defense ready and where they need to be week in and week out. But but my goodness, we we gotta get we gotta get twenty, you know, and I think this defense I think Coach Rogers and Coach Candidate will have this defense ready and where they need to be week in and week out. But we got to have some help on the offensive side of the ball. Well, Jackie, you had a lot of guys that we just talked about on the defensive side of the ball, and we'll have to name our player of the game so that we can talk about who that's going to be for the Monday night football show and who you got. I mean, you know, a guy that went out and played hard all night long, you know, one of those guys you talked about, and put the only points on the board for the Wildcats tonight. And that's number nine, the outside linebacker, Robert Baker. I mean, heck of a game out there. And comes up with a huge, huge, huge interception. Returns it for a touchdown as the uh, time's running out in the uh, first, first half, half there. So, I mean. Well, it's absolutely, you know, no matter what else Robert Baker did on the football fishing, the Cats, because of pressure to the quarterback, got the pass intercepted, and Robert Baker took it to the house. He was in the right place at the right time. And that play, that play was the biggest play of this ball game tonight. I mean, obviously the safety coming back to give the Wildcats the lead at the end is a big play also. But that one play to keep the Cats alive and in this ball game was huge. Robert Baker, player of the game. We'll get him to join us Monday night over at the Coaches Show. We want you to join us as well. Monday night at 7 o'clock at Crystal River Seafood. Uh, we will be there and we'll be live and in person. You can join us. We'll have the head coach, J- Jamie Rogers, will be there and yeah, but the biggest thing is, man, it's the time to talk about this football team and, you know, to celebrate some of the kids that are on the team and, and just to sit down and have a good time with, with other Wildcat fans. And what, yeah, that's what I was going to mention, Mike. What an atmosphere, you know. You get to be surrounded by Wildcat fans that love it as much as we do. Uh, again, a chance to bring the kids out, you know, and not only the player of the game comes, you know. Monday night. He may get a little time going up there, Mike, those young whippersnappers. Yeah, we can and, do that. They, I mean, they, they don't think they want any of this, but. Well, and some other big things that we've got coming up for that show later on. Um, if you listen in on Monday night, you'll have a chance to win a big boys gift certificate uh, or a big boys combo. Um, and later on in the year, my man Tim Hughes is going to give away some uh, Jag- Jacksonville Jaguar uh, football tickets. And so we will be doing that. But listen, they're going to run us out of here. we got to get going. So we're going to close it up. Beauty Parlor and Boutique, we thank you for listening into the post game show here. 
Come join us Monday night at 7 at Crystal River, and then next Friday night at 7 o'clock back at home, the Wildcats will host Menendez. So for Mike Cruz, for Jackie Baker, for John Meadows back at the station, and for everybody listening in here, we're going to say good night, everybody, and we'll talk to you Monday night. The Baker County High School Football Post Game Show on 97.5 FM has been brought to you by the Beauty Parlor Salon and Boutique.